Thomas. As always, a special treat when Rene Rancor is in the building. This evening's on-ice officials, the referee is Mr. Dan O'Halloran, linesman Fred Campitelli, and Mark Messier. Bob, a look at the goaltenders tonight. It should be a good matchup. Yeah, Stefan Beauregard in the nets for Moncton. He's got a 3.38 goals against average. Been traded four times since January of 1992. He's won 9-14 this year. He's been on the Winnipeg, the Buffalo to Chicago to Winnipeg tour, and he's been around Mike Bales, 4.21 goals against average last year, 4.03 this year. Last year, this year he's 7, 8, and 4. Last year, 22 and 17. Team was a little better, but Mike Bales out of Ohio State in the Nets for the Providence Bruins tonight. And as always, Bales continues to play well over his two-year career as a pro in Providence, uh, far above the 500 mark, and he's doing that again this year, unbeaten in 7 of 10. Opening draw, Craig Fisher against Sergei Joltak. Glad you've tuned in tonight on Nesson. The Hawks control the veteran. Andy Brickley flips to center for Ross Wilson. Wilson corrals and is able to clear. Darren Stolk retreats for Providence. Left wing boards too far for newcomer Martin Santamore. Stolk gets it back, trickles it ahead. Santamore had it tied in his skates. Just 30 seconds into a scoreless first tonight in Providence. Hawks on the clear in. Mike Bale saying it's icing. Brickley beats Stolk to it and that will wave off the icing call. Santa Moore bunts it ahead, and Ken Hammond will lead the charge. Hammond back off left wing. Santa Moore fires a blocking glove save by Beauregard. Rebound loose. Panaleon up for Joltak, and there's Beauregard again with a gold pad. Ross Wilson 
Able to relieve the pressure from Moncton. He flips it back where Ken Hammond will turn. On the left wing for his defense partner, Stoke. Dangerous little pass collected by David Capuano. Drop pass, John Morris sneaking in. Tried to return for Capuano. That was snared and cleared by Moncton. Working back at center, Russ Romanuk over skates. Harris Vitalinch out there with him, along with a hard shooting John LeBlanc. Beauregard looking to his right from the Moncton cage. Morris digging along with Capuano. Puck loosened up. Here's Cam Stewart, just on reassignment from Boston. Stewart, wraparound, smothered there and deflected out of play for a whistle. Now, Stewart made a nice little play there. He was looking for somebody to pass the puck to, and he made the right decision. There was no one open. He just made a little move around the net, tried to tuck it in, and looking for his first goal in the American Hockey League. Dmitry Kovartalnov called up. Cam Stewart sent down, and he'd like to open up his American Hockey League career with a goal. So he was looking, looking, couldn't find anybody. Finally, just tried to make the tuck. They let him come out in front and snap on off. Beauregard's made some dandy saves in the opening series. Made a beauty. Panelaev and Zoltok combined in front of the net, and he just made a dandy stop. Stefan Beauregard, one of the goaltenders in the American Hockey League, when he is on and on early, he is difficult to beat. 18.20 to go in the first period. Nothing, nothing. Providence playing host to Moncton tonight on Nesson. Dennis Smith with a point drive. Sticked away by Beauregard. And the Hawks will motor back to center. Bilesma on the outlet. Here's Wayne Doucette, ridden away by Jim Weimer. Bilesma from a bad angle. Shot didn't get through. Pretty good team defense right there coming back, Joe. We had excellent back checking by Providence, and that's why they weren't able to get off a pass or shot. Mike O'Connell has heaped praise on his club for its overall team defense. The Bees have won eight of their last 11, and as Morris moved in, he did so offside. Moncton head coach Robbie Laird in his second season behind the bench with Moncton. And being a head coach in Moncton it has a good projection to the NHL, Bob. As Michael Connolly, head coach of the Providence Bruins, and struggled at the beginning of this his second season. But uh, I think he's finally got a team that he's comfortable with. Former Moncton Hawks coaches who are now working in the National Hockey League, Pierre Paget, along with Rick Bonus and Terry Crisp. After listening to that Quebec game the other night, he may not be working as a coach in the National Hockey League too much longer. The Bluebirds are out in that Boston-Quebec game. Careful now, Bob. <laughs> I don't want his job. Two minutes and 15 seconds into a scoreless first in Providence tonight. Fred Knipscher with good work to keep the puck in the attack zone for the Bees. Ryan Straub looking to outlet for Andy Brickley. Again, the Bruins keep in. Roll off. Looking to slot one for Berdnikoff. That's intercepted. And Moncton will move back to center. Inside out, Craig Fisher with a move roll off, able to shoulder him from the puck. It makes it so much easier to make the plays like that when people are covering guys coming back down the ice. Here's a two on two break. Knipscher loads and fires a right pad stop. Rebound back to the slot. Roll off jumping up on the play. Puck off of his stick. We've played three minutes in period one now. Moncton on the road, beginning a five game. Nine night trip. A dump in from center. Todd Copeland fools Mike Bales. Todd Copeland, Bob, with a little look away that fooled Mike Bales. Well, it's only Todd Copeland's second goal of the season, but Bales really didn't see the puck until it was by him. There was a little bit of a screen in front of him. Copeland dumped the puck in, I'm telling you, about as close to the red line as you could, right at the line. Watch him right here, and Bales is going to make a very late move at this. You're going to see it very, very late. He was back in the cage, just didn't see that puck at all. And then you can see the smile on the face of Todd Copeland. He pulled the wool over Mike Bale's eyes, and Mike O'Connell back behind the Providence Bruins bench knows a thing or two about doing that. He scored a couple of those game type of goals in his National Hockey League career. 16.55 in the first. Copeland has given the Hawks the one nothing advantage on the road. Moncton with it at center. Milan Tihi will drive in. Bales will slow, and Stolp will move. Out for Santa Moore, deflects to center. Stepping up Ardo Bloomston there. Sergei Zoltak took it from him. Santa Moore on the clear in. Panaleev will give chase. The veteran Bloomston back to get it. Bloomston unable to lob over the head of Hammond. Down low, here's Panaleev on the backhand. Tried to shift to the forehand and it was sticked away by Teehe. Hawks on the clear away. Through the neutral zone, Harris Vita Lynch. Vita Lynch working in on Stolk and Stolk took care of that. 
Vitalinch and Stolt tilt still tied together. Bale set a pick on Russ Romano. Sergei Zoltak on the mark for Martin Sanamore. one nothing Hawks. We've played four minutes of the first. Beauregard hands for Bloomston. Tripped down by Panalea. O'Halloran allows play to continue. And the Hawks will clear to center. Regrouping, this is Cam Stewart. His first AHL action of the season. Stewart all by his lonesome into the offensive zone. Centering pass. Blocking that aside was Todd Copeland. Capuano and Doucette go round and round. Hawks captain Rob Murray working to center was hit high by Jim Weimer. Here's the game's first penalty. And the first power play chance for Moncton when we bring you back. 1-0 Hawks. They're watching Providence Bruins hockey on Nesson. Every day you're bombarded with advertising that screams, buy this, buy that, try this, try that. But while your desire for all this cool stuff is unlimited, your paycheck isn't. I mean, after you pay the phone, rent, and electric, there's barely enough to pay for necessity, like cable and CDs. It just isn't fair. But before you give up on that Mudman mountain bike, consider this, a Fleet Low Interest credit card. Because unlike all those things that take more out of your paycheck, Fleet Low Interest credit cards take out less, which gives you more to play around with. Fleet, whatever you make, they can make it go further. Well, Rob Murray has 201 minutes in penalties, leads Moncton, but uh, Weimer beats him to the punch here. This is called roughing, could have been high sticking. Moncton's going on, the, going on the power play. Their power play over the course of the season ranks ninth in the American Hockey League, 51 of 253 for a 20% effectiveness. The shorthand for the Providence Bruins, they've given up 57 goals in 261 shorthands. They've scored on 22% of the time. That's good enough for 13th in the American Hockey League. That's not real good. Joltak and Harjay up top, Smith and Roloff in back, the penalty killers for Mike O'Connell. one nothing if you're just tuning in, the goal-getter for Moncton, Todd Copeland, on a dump in from center ice. Brian Straub hoists one to the right of Mike Bale. Dennis Smith around the dasher and out. The goal that was scored by Copeland reminds us a little bit of the goal that Laviolette scored for the U.S. team today to bring them back to 4-3 to three in that uh, come-from-behind tie with the French national team. Get it on goal. Rob Murray will clear in. Bales again will roam. Dennis Smith tries it once more around the horn. Rob Murray was in waiting. Vito Lynch to the slot. Picked away by Roloff. And he'll low bridge linesman Fred Campitelli and ice the puck. Well, I'll tell you, when he low bridges you, you better get the bridge out of the way quick. Big time shooter is John Roloff. What a hit there. Darren Stolt deposits Murray into the penalty bench. Craig Fisher left it for Murray, who's still in a bit of a daze. Here's Fred Knipscher storming in shorthanded. Knipscher, wrist shot, blocking glove save. Morris trailing the play, couldn't get there. Brian Straub jumps back for Moncton. 46 seconds left in Weimer's minor. Hawks on the power play. Into the offensive zone. Ross Wilson, a Moncton leading scorer. Wilson, stick checked by Hammond. Wilson and Hammond go to the corner. Wilson strong on the stick, got it for LeBlanc. Left point, Arto Bloomston. His pass down low, Craig Fisher couldn't do anything with it, and Fred Knipscher will clear. Hawks in front, 1-0 on enemy ice. Alyeg Makulchik to center. Off for Arto Bloomston. Bloomston working wide, Roloff there to cancel that rush. Joltak around the rim of the dasher, but not out. LeBlanc fires, blocking glove save. Rebound taken from harm by Cam Stewart, and dumped. I think Providence got a little break there because they had a bad break at the start of that. Puck took a funny bounce, ended up to the left point. Shot on Bales, but it was deflected outside and cleared. You see the Bruins survive the first power play chance of the night. 13.20 to go in the opening period. It is 1-0 for Moncton. Stefan Beauregard will watch. As the Hawk defense moves away, it is McCoolchick on the outlet pass. Bilesma cross ice for Wayne Doucette. Rubbed away by Ken Hammond and nudged clear by Joltak to center. Mark Major puts a bump onto a speedy Ken Jernander. McCoolchick clears it back. Icing wave. Ken Hammond off on the left wing for Cam Stewart. His tap finds Mark Major. Major's return to an unsuspecting Stewart is collected by Dennis Smith. Smith will bounce one towards Beauregard. Beauregard handles that away. Major put a tough check onto Copeland. Darren Stolk. At center for Providence. Stoke on the clear end. This could be icing. We have a delayed penalty coming up. It's touched up, and when we return, the Bruins will have a power play chance. Trailing 1-0 on Nesson. Hey, you know, it's been
have the style. You can have the guts. You can make all the right moves. But never underestimate your opponent. Or it's lights out. Prime Championship Boxing. Top ranked fighters across the nation showcase their talent in an all out brawl. From lightweights to heavyweights, the action isn't over until the last man lays on the canvas on Prime Championship Boxing. Tune in for the best boxing you can find. Todd Copeland, the goal scorer at three minutes of the period, uh, goes off two minutes for slashing at 748. Providence Bruins on the power play, Bob, have been just great. They've got power play goals in 12th straight. That's a franchise record. Number four in the league, 62 of 280 for 22% effectiveness. The Moncton team has given up 55 shorthand goals in 281 shorthand situations. 20% of the time they are scored on. That's good for fifth in the league. The Hawks control of faceoff and clear. John Roloff, a man to watch on the Bruins' power play. He's got nine goals this year, Bob, six of them with a man power advantage. Well, he got the number four ranked power play against the number five ranked shorthand. Should be a good matchup. Strength against strength. Thus far, the Hawks have uh, won the battle. 30 seconds gone by in the power play chance. As we approach 12 minutes even in the first, it's 1-0 for visiting Moncton tonight. Grigori Panaleev carves to center. Panaleev in full stride. Offsides, Providence on the rush. Panaleev with one extra move. Well, it was not only the one extra move, the, he came right to left, and he was coming, fading off to the left-hand side. The winger on the right side was just blowing down that side, so I think it was a combination of the stick handle and the carry fading a little bit to the left to put him offside. One of the things that has really uh, changed over the last three or four years of shorthand play, here's the move. Now watch him. He's going to sort of fade. See the winger on the right side, and he fades a little bit to the left. Diddles when he gets across the line, but that little fade put the timing of that rush off. One of the things that has changed, I think, the last four or five years of hockey at the pro level and the college level is teams are doing a great job in center zone of not allowing teams to carry the puck into the zone. And I think the biggest changes in power play have been the inability of teams to carry it inconsistently and set it up. When you have trouble on power play, it's usually because you don't get it set up quickly. And that uh, that good center zone defense, the good shorthand forecheck, goes a lot long way to really keeping those power play numbers down. And I'd love to see the time of possession for the Bruins in the offensive zone during this power play. Not very much yeah. thus far. And that's the key. Roll off across the line and no further. See, now Providence is persisting in trying to carry the puck in. And on three consecutive rushes, they've been stopped. And one of the things that happens is teams persist in trying to carry it in instead of dumping as soon as you get across the line. Hammond spots Morris. Nifty little drop pass for Santa Moore. The return for the clever John Morris. Watch there by Mikulchik. The Hawks able to clear. Just 25 seconds left in the Bruins' power play chance. Four rushes and four kickouts. It's about all. Santa Moore, stick checked away by Milan Tihi, gobbling it up and clearing. It's Bildsma for Moncton. Sergei Joltak. Ooh. Delicate little pass. Fonz Ken oh. Hammond. A pull. <laughs> True. Hammond in. Sidesteps Murray with a great move, but lost his stick in the process. Behind the goal, Moncton with it. Arto Bloomston there. Hawks back to full strength. Bloomston. Able to use the boards to get it to center. Yeah, unable to get it set up in the zone one time in that entire, entire power play. Sergei Joltak now for the black and gold on the clear in. We're approaching the midway portion of the first. It's 1-0 for Moncton if you're just tuning in tonight on Nesson. Joe Beninati alongside Bob Norton. 1-0 for the Hawks thanks to Todd Copeland. And a whistle on the play. The puck played above the height of the shoulder with a stick. You know, we talk about uh, changes in the game, and I think one of the changes in the game has been the real emphasis in the coaching of center ice play. Uh, center ice defense, they can call it, call it traps or whatever they want to call it, but center ice defensive play and schemes of center ice defensive play have really become an important part of hockey now at both the international level, the college level, and the pro level. And I think that that's the, one of the ways, one of the methods by which teams are able to slow down a more effective and better team, particularly in power play situations. Bruins on the clear in. The Hawks with John LeBlanc, former 50 goal scorer in this league, moving it away. The dump in by Russ Romana. Bales couldn't slow it down. Along the right wing dasher, Sergei Verdnikov able to clear by LeBlanc and to center. Jim Weimer for Providence on the right wing. Verdnikov couldn't collect it. Copeland off the dasher. That bank passed. It worked. Chervyukov kept. Here's Camp Stewart. Drop pass Weimer. Back for Stewart. To the goal mouth. Weimer on the backhand. Dumped it wide. 
Stewart working hard out of the corner. Points it for Weimer. Behind the goal, this is Sergei Verdnikov. Verdnikov shakes away from Russ Romanuk, but not Todd Copeland, who caught him with a good shoulder check. Providence still in the offensive zone. Verdnikov pass goes unanswered. John LeBlanc slowly back on Denis Cherviakov. Cherviakov nullified that one on one. Sergei Verdnikov for the Bruins. Bothered by Romanuk at center. Another neutral zone turnover. Hawks will clear. Cherviakov without his protective helmet to his defense partner, Jim Weimer. 13 year pro, plays it ahead to second year man, Sergei Joltak. Joltak lost possession. Craig Fisher was stripped. Sergei now dealing with Andy Brickley. Joltak won the battle. Out of the head for Pantaleya. Play bogged down in the neutral zone. Muller charging on in. Here's Craig Fisher to the goal mouth. Kicked out of there by Bales. A good stick stop. Ross Wilson working. Wrist shot. Another save for Bales. That one easy pickings. And as Cherviakov, recognizing his club needs a whistle, sends it the length of the ice. This will be icing as McCoolchick makes the touch. 1-0 Moncton. 8.15 to go in the first. Back in a moment on Nesson. CCM's Hockey East replica jerseys in stock at Hockey East University bookstores and available at your local sporting goods store. That's a Shervikov check along the sideboards. Watch it right here, but watch what Muller's able to do. Here's the body right there. Watch now. He's going to continue on and go to the net. Now, Shervikov with the hit isn't able to keep the body out. Muller keeps going. Fisher comes to the net. They had a good two-on-one chance here. Fisher tries to dangle toward the middle, but you see Muller right back toward the middle of the ice. And the Shervikov check sounded great. Everybody yelled, but in bottom line, he didn't keep the guy out of the play. Muller worked his way through the check toward the front of the net. Greg Fisher had a chance. I think he had Muller open there. Sliding block in front prevented possibly the pass, but uh, they dodged a bullet there. Right off the draw, Bloomston blisters one wide of Mike Bales in the nets tonight for Providence. Eight minutes to go in the first. It is one nothing for Moncton. Neutral zone play. Stewart taps it. David Capuano will glide ahead. Working wide on Milan Tihi. Drops it off for Stewart. Tried to kick it from his skate to his stick. Couldn't get it there. Arto Bloomston, back checked well by John Morris. Ken Hammond ahead for Capuano. Capuano pressured by Rob Murray. Morris came to his aid, but the Hawks are able to keep in. Left wing corner, Jernander dumped by Darren Stolk. Jernander right back to his skates. Stolk again deposits him on his backside. Murray off for Jernander a third time. He'll try Stolk. Swings it back behind the goal. Murray playing peekaboo to the slot for Bilesma. The pass was off target. Cam Stewart coughed it up at center. Russ Romanuk just off the player's bench for Moncton. He couldn't move ahead with it. David Capuano wants to get a shift change. And leave it back for Stoke to control. Just off the bench, Sergei Verdnikov for Providence. Verdnikov matched there. Morris moves in. Head fake on Bloomston. Right to the point. Couldn't get the shot on the goal. Harche digging for it. And Morris remains on the ice for a moment as the Hawks move the other direction. 6.45 in the first, one nothing Moncton. Bruins had their best chance of the game, perhaps right there. And John Morris couldn't get the shot on the goal as he was being checked. Smith on the flip out. Harche may have a break. Todd Harche in solo. Save for the goal. Watch what happens. Muller's going to get the puck right here in center ice. Muller loses the puck at center ice. Here comes Harche. Knipsch is going to continue on the play to the wide side. Here's Harche. Watch Knipsch. Knipsch is going to roll right. Look at the rebound. Staying up behind the play. Knocks it in. Knipsch on the rebound. 
Burtnikoff was there as well, but both of them stayed enough back. You see, you can, you can rush that play too much, get in too deep and not be able to get the rebound. Both Knipsch and Burtnikoff stayed back off the play when Hache stripped Muller of the puck. It was Hache and alone, but the other two guys, Burtnikoff and Muller, stay in good position to cashier a rebound. Great hustle. All three Providence Bruins forwards beat the back-checking Hawks to the net. 6-15 in the first. We're even at one. Knipsch now with goals in back-to-back -back games. Cherbyakov was spilled. And a, a guilty Rob, or a check that, a, a guilty Craig Fisher is heading to the penalty bench. He's going to beg and plead that it was an accident. O'Halloran says sit down for two minutes. 1-1 one, one, your score. We're back after this on Nesson. Most people already know that a GMC Jimmy comes with features that give it all the strength of a truck and all the ride and comfort of a car. But what you may not know is that right now, it also features a lease that's never been more comfortable. The all-new Jimmy 24-month lease. Get to know one today at your New England GMC truck dealer. Greg Fisher doesn't get a lot of penalty minutes. Only had 31 coming into tonight's game. That's a pretty classic one. You see where that stick is? Right up in the crotch. That's a first-class trip. Well done and very I'm graphic. I'm not sure it's a Two trip partner. as a hold. That's well, any, anything better than a hook in that department, yeah, in that area right. you, that you just described. More a hold than anything else. No hooks, please. Providence Bruins on the power play. Working with their second manpower advantage of the night. As we approach six minutes remaining in the first. Now, remember the last power play, the Bruins were not able to carry the puck into the zone. What they may look to do here is get everybody on the jump and dump it in. Here's Cam Stewart at center. No numbers advantage. They should listen to you here. Roloff crashed hard. Good hit by Copeland. Straub along the boards, and Murray will drill it down. Well, we can quickly see, Bob, while the Hawks are so good at penalty killing. Well, they're just doing a very good job. They line up there in the line, bother you a little bit in the forecheck, bother you a little bit more in the center zone. I watch it. Just get, gathered up four guys right across the red line. There's the play. Now go get it. Hammond will fire it in. Joltak will give chase. Straub got there first. Straub whiffed on the first attempt, but managed to uh, clear it the second time. Yeah, what they had there was they interfered with Panalea from the right side. He never got in to get the loose puck. Roloff snakes in for Cam Stewart. Stewart, left wing board, stripped immediately. One minute to go in the power play for Providence. Left point, Roloff closing. Right side, Hammond on the one-timer, off the mark. Straub around the dasher. Jernander looking to finish the job. Good work. Roloff kept it. Midpoint. Here's Sergei Joltak. Fires and scores! Well, I'll tell you, Roloff makes a tremendous play here on the right boards. He just makes a hustle play to get over to stop it. As Mark the Thunder had it out now, he zips it over quickly, gets it by the outside man. Now Penelay has got all sorts of room to roll in there and get that show talk, rather, roll in there and get that shot off. No one in there. Once they get the pass by and they weren't able to stop the puck on the sideboards, two men caught in, one caught in deep, another one misses the crossing pass, and that gave show talk a walk-in from the left point. And that gave that guy a nightmare. Stefan Beauregard, the Hawks goaltender, barking at his defense for... The poor rotation. 4.50 to go in the first. Bruins have battled back from a one-goal deficit to take a one-goal lead. In the neutral zone, Weimer on the clear in. Gobbled up and taken back by Milan Tihi. Left wing boards, Romana had that boxed away by Weimer. Even strength, five aside, the two clubs skate. Arto Bloomston, help from Tihi. Crowd reacting as Mark Major bounced Bloomston to the ice. At the Bruin blue line, Dennis Smith starts back with Fred Knipscher. Teehee in the way for Moncton. Center ice, LeBlanc tapped away by Weimer. David Capuano, Fred Knipscher, and Mark Major up front now for Mike O'Connell and Mark Kumpel. Hawks at center. The veteran Andy Brickley couldn't skip by Dennis Smith. Smith will dump it diagonally. Bloomston is there ahead of Knipscher's checking. Less than four minutes to go in the first. 2-1 Providence. Tonight in Providence on Nesson. John LeBlanc ahead. Brickley knocking it out of the air. Couldn't get it to Harris Vitalinch. Brickley on the regroup for Todd Copeland. 
Ox in the clear in. Bales will think better of playing that away. He'll force a whistle to his right. Bob, we take a peek at Andy Brickley. 12-year veteran who will join us in between the second and third periods tonight. All-American at the University of New Hampshire and winner of the Friends of UNH Hockey Summer Golf Tournament this past summer. He, and along with his brother Quentin, rolled away with all the prizes up at uh, Pizzo Air Force Base Golf Course. Solid playmaker at any level, National or American Hockey League. A former Boston Bruin is Andy Brickley. His Hawks tonight trailing the Bruins 2-1. Face off in their offensive zone. Providence with it, a former Moncton Hawk, Todd Harche moves to center. His outlet pass, Santa Moore couldn't get there. Straub will get help from Todd Copeland, he'll turn deep. Back off to partner Straub, waved at by Santa Moore. Flips it ahead, Darren Stolk, who's been very physical tonight for Providence. He'll get some help from Santa Moore to clear back into the Moncton zone. Copeland swats it ahead for Wilson. Stolp took a bouncing puck back. Give and take through the neutral zone. Hawks on the offensive rush. Stolp again there to cancel. Fisher waved at it. Here comes Cam Stewart to the races. Left wing board. Stewart written out rudely by Todd Copeland. Hawks work back. Craig Fisher. Fisher inside out. Darren Stolp stopped that rush, and the Hawks are in offsides on the play. Ross Wilson, leading scorer for the Moncton Hawks, on loan from the Dallas Stars. This has got more great Big East women's basketball on the way tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Tune in for take delayed coverage as Pitt takes on Seton Hall. Big East women's basketball tomorrow night at 8 right here on Nesson. And Brian Straub played at the University of Maine. Black Bear is Todd Richards, another hockey veteran, played at the University of Massachusetts at Lowell. Mark Richards shared uh, goaltending duties at Lowell. 225 in the first. Providence in front. Looking to continue its unbeaten ways at home. Unbeaten in their last four in the Civic Center. David Capuano stalled by Arto Bloomston. Murray plays the right wing side for Teehee. Back off for Murray. Galloping into the offensive zone. Murray on the curl. Hawks captain to the goal mouth, Bales lunging to his right. Wraparound attempt by Vita Lynch, snared by Bales on the recovery. Dan Bilesma, eight, not nine, Harris Vita Lynch with a chance. I'll tell you, the play that Bales made was on, on the uh, Wayne Doucette on the inside. Watch 26 come to the front of the net as Murray curls around right to the front of that watch, right here, 26. That's the guy that created the first screen. I think Bales made a super stop. Right there, keeping that one out of the net. Now he's out of the play. And as you see, Beetlelynch goes around the back of the net and tries to stuff it in. Beetlelynch almost had that one in. Bilesma, was it? Bilesma, Dan Bilesma. See, I, I, I follow you like a lemming, Joe. Yeah, we had the same right disease the on cliff. that play. That is young Dan Bilesma. Began the year in the East Coast League. Nice save by Bales on the first play, though, because that was a tough one with big number 26, Wayne Doucette, right in front of him. Hey, our boy's out there at center now for Moncton. The guy we like, Vita Lynch, who we give all the credit to. It's undeserved. Absolutely. He's out there now. It Vita Lynch opposed by John Morris. 12 straight games with points now for Harris. Yeah, John Morris, extremely clever center. He loses that face off. Though. LeBlanc couldn't keep in. Hawks will tag up. Less than two minutes to go in the first. Still 2-1 for Providence. Morris, another veteran of the University of Lowe. He was a great goal scorer, point man, outstanding assist guy as well. One of the all-time Hockey East leaders. Yeah, he can put points on the board. He's really helped this team offensively. Stewart, great move into the offensive zone. Cam Stewart's first AHL game tonight with Providence. Reassigned by Boston today. A steal. Morris off for Stewart. He jammed it over top. Deflected off a Copeland stick out of play. Well, uh, you know, this is one of the things that Morris does that sometimes go unnoticed with the points he puts on the board. He has got a very clever stick on the back check, and he does a pocket pick here as Stewart just flips the puck into the zone, going behind the net to try to pick it up is Brian Straub, and watch him right there. Just bothering him, gets the puck loose and tries to flip in front. Stewart gets the shot off. It's deflected high over the cage by number four, Todd Copeland, but Morris is extremely good with the stick. Michael Connell talking to Cam Stewart there, giving him some advice about how to read a play, read that play, and 
Maybe get himself back off Copeland a little bit to get the shot off. Smiling Sergei Joltak won the draw back for Jim Weimer. His shot was blocked. Big rebound. Karam's back to center. Joltak will try it once more. Sergei Joltak cranks it up from center. Teehee will be the first back for Moncton. Pressure comes from Grigori Pantalea. Murray took a wrap there. Santa Moore came to greet him. Bruins picking up the four-checking pressure. Another hit. Weimer stepping down to take aim on Dan Bilesma. 60 seconds to go in the first. Marco Blumstead. Outlet for Ken Jernander. Jernander skips to center. Pass off to the captain. Murray goes awry. Jernander dumps it ahead, and Dennis Smith will wait. Well, it's been a great period of hockey. I think it's one of the best periods we've seen down here in Providence this year during the game's finesse. It would figure these two teams are going in a positive direction. Panalea, left wing circle. Grigori Panalea spun down. We have a whistle. And penalty upcoming. What Penelope wanted to do there, Joe, was just make sure he didn't lose the puck to the outside. He's going to have a holding call. Penelope went around the face-off circle, the wide side of the face-off circle, and looked as if he was being held. Copeland makes his second trip to the penalty box. Watch four. Copeland, you see Penelope trying to work him off with the left arm. Then Copeland gets the left hand on him, the right arm on top. I see that all the time in this league, and that never gets called. Good call there. Providence will take it. It means power play chance number three, and it comes very late in the period. That seemed like a little marginal, didn't it? Yes. Oh, I agree. There are nights when there are too oh. many nights when those go against you. Todd Copeland with the penalty. His second trip to the penalty box tonight. Copeland came into the night with 100 minutes of penalties. Second on the uh, third on the Moncton Hawk team. He now has 104. Penelope, what he didn't want to do there with 36 seconds on the clock, you'd never want to lose the puck out high in the late stages of a period. If you do anything, you want to bury it in deep. Right off the draw, Bruins control. Ken Hammond off on the right flank. David Capuano. Hammond and Capuano playing catch. Capuano closing in. Fires. That was blocked. Up out of play. Fans stay with us in between the first and second periods tonight. Special old-timers game coming your way. The roadie oldies, Bob. I think you're going to enjoy this one. Yeah, it was a little different uh, shorthand defensive setup in there. Bilesman and Murray were pretty passive out there on the outside box and let Providence have it and roll it around on the outside. And they just were trying to stay in pretty much a square box without a rotation there as uh, Providence was on an overload on the right-hand side of the power play. Maybe an effect of the Joltak goal where they got caught making all those moves. Yeah, well, what they get caught there is they get caught thinking they could get the puck out on the sideboards, lost one of the outside men on the side. 22.3 seconds in the first. Hammond, good job to keep it in. Roll off fires. That was blocked. Bilesma gave up his body. Fred Knipscher, Providence leading power play goal getter. Roll off. Tried to go through the box. Bloomston made the block. Nine seconds, now eight. You see the clock imposed. Hammond waiting. Crowd impatient. Wrist shot down low. Harche couldn't get the rebound. And the Hawks will survive. 20 minutes are in the books tonight at the Providence Civic Center. And your score after one is Stefan Beauregard and company make their way to the dressing rooms. After 20 minutes, it's 2-1 for Providence, Bob. And we mentioned now both teams are going in the right direction. Both teams played well in the opening time. I thought that was a great period of hockey. Both teams really into it. A lot of good body and uh, an outstanding period of hockey. Providence out on top, 2-1, to one, coming back from a 1-0 deficit. Our first intermission activities uh, will continue. The Rodeo Oldies coming up next on Nesson. Dave, I have tears in my eyes. I just can't... Welcome back, everybody, to the great city of Providence. The Providence Civic Center, the Bruins lead the Moncton Hawks by a score of 2-1 to one at the end of one. Scoring opened up at three minutes. It looked bleak for the Providence Bruins with this goal. Todd Copeland, his second goal of the season from Brian Straub. And just take a look at this one as Copeland just sort of fires this from the red line, just trying to dump it into the zone. And goaltender Mike Bales never saw it, moved almost after the puck was by him. That made the score one to nothing, as I said. Copeland from Brian Straub. Then at 13.30, Fred Knipscher scores his 17th of the season from Todd Harche and Dennis Smith. This was a rush by Knipscher, by Harche rather, on the breakaway, and we had uh, Knipscher following nicely behind the play in good position to cashier that rebound. Knipscher with the goal from Harche and Dennis Smith. The next goal, the second goal for the Providence Bruins was a, a pretty goal. Sergei Joltok gets his 19th, his seventh on power play. 
Watch the play right here along the sideboards. Now, you see what happens here. Hammond races to the puck to keep it in. This man right here is responsible for outside coverage on Roloff, who gets into this position. Roloff makes a nice save. The puck is going to come by to the boards. Now, remember, he's the outside man. All right, right now, Roloff, that outside man is stuck in here. Now, Roloff is going to do a nice job here of looking the guy off. He's going to look to the inside. Watch what happens. Roloff looks inside. See him look? Now, watch right there. He isolated right here. He isolated, gets the, the man responsible for the outside is stuck over on this side, made the move and roll off when he looked in, got the puck over to Joltok. Now all that open ice, Joltok's able to walk in right in front. You see number 16, Cam Stewart. He does a nifty job right there of screening the goalie. You can see him skate right at the goalie. Goalie never saw it. An excellent play by a number of players. Hammond to force the play. Roll off to look off the cover. He looked inside, looked off the cover guy, kept him frozen on the inside, passed it over, and uh, boy, Sergei Joltak just had a walk in from there. And the last part of the play, Cam Stewart just interfering like a son of a gun right in front of the net. And that lead goal has Moncton head coach Robbie Laird pacing and Mike O'Connell behind the Bruins bench, appreciative of the 2 1 lead his Bruins carry with him to the second period tonight in Providence. Joe Beninati alongside Bob Norton. Bob, we thought this would be a good one. These two teams are both moving up in their respective divisions. The Bruins playing very well in the Northern Division, winning eight of their last 11, and just like Moncton, we see the Hawks are going to begin the second period a man down. And that, I believe, was uh, Copeland's penalty. Todd Copeland in the penalty box for his second penalty of the night. Providence Bruins have a power play goal. You just saw it. I'll tell you, that's a little thing that Roloff did there. You know, I, I watched it the first time, and I, I saw it on replay. He gave me a chance to look at it again. You see, when he, he knew that outside man was at the side boards, and he got the puck on the point. Now, he wants to make a pass across, but if he makes a pass across and looks to that in that direction, the inside man, the man responsible for the left point, responsible is Joltok, is going to try to jump on that pass and could get a breakaway. So what he did was he looked inside and made the guy just froze him there, didn't let him leak out, didn't give away the pass and as a result that opened up he zipped it over and then once Joltok made that move he just walked in and made that made a that's just a good play by a lot of folks on the line and Stewart's right at the end you know that was sort of a unnoticed part of the play even by us up here but then Stewart you could see on that Joltok goal Stewart just uh, goalie had no way of seeing them that that I think is what Borgard was oh, upset was. with that they didn't get Stewart out of this so we had a chance to at least look at the buck Milan Tihi was a defender for Moncton who was pitter pattering in front with uh, Cam Stewart, who delayed up nicely for Sergey to blast it through the screen. I like that play. 2-1, Bruins ahead. We start period two. Black and gold on a power play. Milan Tihi with it. Off to Arto Blumsten. Long time standout defender in the Swedish Elite League with Jurgard. Blumsten clears in. Hammond will wait. Joltak will swing. Ken Hammond, the reigning Sherwood AHL Player of the Week, second time this season. Hammond has won that award. He'll clear it in. Left wing corner boards. Stewart spun around by Teehee. Teehee and Stewart. Cam Stewart comes out of there with a puck. He's dumped right in front of referee O'Halloran. Play continues. Right point Weimer. Behind the goal. Santa Moore let it come through. Joltok challenged by Milan Teehee. Sergei Joltok out of the corner. Santa Moore. Backhand. Stop Beauregard. Rebound. Squib wide. Loose puck. Gobbled up by Bloomston and Beauregard in combination. Now that was a poor play by Moncton's defense on the inside. They just left that move to the front of the net wide open as Joltok made a nifty move over there to just influence everything to the outside. Now this play should never be allowed out of the corner. Watch, that's a one-on-one -on -one out of the corner. That's got to stay right there in the corner. Box him in right there, but watch what happens. Joltok makes a little move around, makes him think he's going outside, then drop, watch, see where he is now? Look how far out he is. He isolates that guy way outside, slips it back in to Martin St. Amour, and St. Amour can walk right toward the net. Very, very poor. You're playing zone in there. You can't chase Joltok out to the sideboards halfway out of the zone when you're the inside guy. No, that's what the crafty center wants you to do. Bruins have 25 seconds left in their power play to start things here in the middle frame. Leading by one. Capuano outskated to the puck by Brian Straub, who will rip it off the boards and clear. Hammond hacked at by Bilesma. Got it along in the left wing flank. Fred Knipscher weaves back into his own territory. Knipscher head and shoulders away from Rob Murray. Hartje moving in. Drop pass for Roloff. 
Now Capuano waits. Roll off at the right point. Copeland just out of the penalty bench. Knipscher, backdoor, Hammond! Fires and scores! Well, it's not a power play goal. Watch right here, watch right on the high side. You can see the defender come down inside, leaving Hammond alone. Now watch what happens. Knipscher sees it, watch, all alone. All alone, over here, just gonna make a beautiful little pass up the chute. Defender not paying any attention to Hammond, comes in from that outside position, puts it away. What a pass by Knipscher. I was just about to say how much more confidence he seems to be having handling the puck, and he just makes a great pass there, and Hammond does what a veteran guy always should do, finds open ice, big area of open ice toward the net, and Kenny Hammond gets the goal. Boy, that was a nice play. It was not a power play goal. They were back at even strength, but they had not gotten set up again in the zone. It might. It was a, a goal attributed to the power play, even though it wasn't a power play goal. It was still an unsettled situation for the Moncton defense. So less than two minutes into our second period, the Bruins have improved their lead to two. Arto Bloomston off on the wing. Ross Wilson met by Sergei Joltak. Wilson chops it ahead. Bloomston continues the rush, but Dennis Smith is there to quiet him down. Hawks must regroup. Milan Tihi, left wing for Arto Bloomston. Cross ice for Ross Wilson, who's got to step on Stewart. Wilson, from a bad angle, Bales made the stop. Rebound, score! On the follow-up opportunity, Moncton's Andy Brickley brings the Hawks within one. Well, Andy Brickley's going to get his 15th goal. Quick response by the Moncton Hawks as the puck comes into the zone on the stick of Ross Wilson. Wilson with the shot. Brickley covered but not quite covered. Is coming back into the zone with him was Dennis Smith. It was one of those almost gutches as Brickley had enough of that stick free that he was able to get the stick down on the ice and capitalize on the rebound. When you're covering a guy coming back like that, the fundamental thing you have to do is to get a stick off the ice. If you don't have the stick off the ice, it's an almost cover. Now watch it again. There's a shot, Brickley swinging from left to right, just gets himself free, picks up the loose puck, and Andy Brickley gets number 15. The 12-year vet now has got four goals in his last two games. He'll join Bob to talk about it in between periods two and three tonight. 3-2 three Providence in front, Harris Vitalich, who's stopped by David Capuano. Neutral zone, Russ Romana clearing it in. Bales unable to slow down, works out okay, Mark Major will trickle it to center. Major left it for Ken Hammond. Ushers ahead for Morris, too hot to handle. Copeland ahead for John LeBlanc. Vita Lynch, left wing boards behind Romanuk. Romanuk racing after it. Hammond there first. There's the whistle for Isaac. 17.08 in period two. 3 2 Bruins. More after this on Nesson. Men's tennis headliners from the hottest stops on the international scene. Relentless action as the best unleash an awesome assault. Catch the best in men's tennis on Nesson, your ticket to the ATP Tour. Prime Hooves is electrifying the Southwest, and there's no stopping this game. The spirit, the energy, the excitement. It's shocking. Prime Hooves, plug it in. It's Baylor and Texas in college hoop action, live on Nesson. Back at the Civic Center in Providence tonight, Joe Beninati alongside Bob Norton. 3-2, both teams have traded goals out of the gate here in the second period. Hawks captain Rob Murray, very good at winning face-offs, Bob. He'll dig in against uh, Sergei Joltak. Tough player, leads the club in penalty minutes, not afraid to mix it up. 201. And a second best in the league, 58 of those come from minor penalties. Jernander on the draw. Murray excused by linesman Fred Campitelli. Good work. Murray chopped it off a Hammond stick, and the Bruins must retreat deep. Darren Stoltz for Providence in the lineup tonight. Bill Armstrong out among the Bruin Twin Tower defenders. Hammond off on the wing. Panaleev, a stick check by Jernander. Bilesma no further than Hammond again. Mike Muller. Clears it back into the Bruins zone. Stoke really rocks some guys in that first period as if he would like to stay dressed. That's exactly what's going to keep him in the lineup. Physical play. Here's Panaleev with an opportunity. Right to the net. He scores! Well, he just 
makes a great curl move with the stick here. Just a tremendous one-on-one -on -one move. Watch him right here. One-on-one -on -one the defender. Boy, I tell you, go down on your knees, you're in trouble. Muller went down on his knees to try to stop that play by Panelay if he just draw it. Watch him inside. Muller get down on his knees. Once he's down on his knees, he's just out of the play. Watch him one-on-one. -on -one. Gonna draw it left. Back to the inside, come front side, split the legs and put it away. Nifty work. Yeah, you, gotta, you can't go to your knees when you're in that kind of situation. You just got to try to skate, play the body and skate him off. You go to your knees, you can't move at all. Providence's leading goal getters now got 21 on the season. It's 4-2 Providence. We've yet to play four minutes in our second period tonight. Wilson on the clear away. TV gliding in. Dennis Cherviakov stepped in his path. Buck is in the Bruins zone. Sergei Burdnikov and Arto Bloomston collide. Roloff takes the bouncing puck. John Roloff off the glass and out. Bloomston with those long strides back to Corral. Bloomston ahead on the mark for Wilson. Dishes it along for Craig Fisher. Splits the seam and works in. The puck just rolled off of his tape at the last instant. Burdnikov there. Hard chase spun Wilson around. Providence has a two-on-two -two developing back through the neutral zone. Knipscher loads it up. Shot was blocked. Mike O'Connell wants a shift change on the go. Way up on the rush. Berdnikoff lost it and Fisher got it by Dennis Smith. Back to the Bruin line. The veteran Jim Weimer moves ahead. Weimer storming in left wing front. Bloomston rattles him to the back dasher. Berdnikoff coughed it up. Russ Romanuk moves it back for Fisher. Fisher dipping and diving through the neutral zone. Stick check well by Dennis Smith. Mark Major's turn. Major over skates. John LeBlanc back on it for Moncton. Five minutes gone by in the second period. Bruins ahead 4-2. A delayed penalty coming up. Providence is going to go a man short. Interference is the call from referee O'Halloran. It's over on the right side. Russ Romanek was coming down the right side, and he was being back-checked there by number 32 for the Providence Bruins, Mark Major, and Major interfered with him just at the blue line. Watch it on the right side. There's Major 32. Takes Romanek down, and that's the interference call. Dangerous Russ Romanuk, all down by Mark Major, away from the play. Romanuk, not half bad since joining Moncton Bob from the Canadian national team. 15 games played for Robbie Laird and 13 goals. Played college hockey at North Dakota for the Fighting Sioux. Romanuk not out there for the moment. Murray flanked by Andy Brickley and. Uh, Harris Vita Lynch. Power play for the Hawks. Straub with it at the midpoint. Stick checked by Hartje. Tihi keeps it at the point position behind the goal. Vita Lynch. Quick move. Big blast. Sailed wide by Brickley. Tihi at the point. Lobs down low for Murray. Challenged by Joltok. Smith comes there to lend a helping hand. Tihi held strong at the point position once more. Puck lobbed high in the air and a whistle. Another high stick on the play. Ness is coming away with more Bruins hockey tomorrow night. Catch the action live from Los Angeles as the Bees take on the Los Angeles Kings. Coverage begins at 10 with Bruins Digest, and Fred, Derek, and Dave have the call as the Boston Bruins battle Wayne Gretzky and the L.A. Kings tomorrow night live on Nesson. On power play, the Moncton Hawks are 51 for 253. Their 20% average is ninth in the American Hockey League. The penalty killing for the Providence Bruins, they've killed coming into tonight's game, 57 of 261, 22% effectiveness. That's good for 13th in the league. They'd like to get that a little better heading into the playoffs. Yes, they would. Vito Lynch, LeBlanc, and Brickley lead the Moncton Hawks with seven power play goals apiece. 90 seconds left to work in the manpower advantage. Trailing by two is Moncton. Vita Lynch on his off wing, left-handed shot, right wing boards. Funneling out, Andy Brickley couldn't take the pass. Hammond for Providence with a backhand, couldn't clear by Teehee. He turned it over, Darren Stolp was able to chip clear. But did Hammond make a nice play with the body there going back behind the net, beautiful play. Tic-tac-toe, back come the Hawks in quickly. Vito Lynch, stripped by John Morris, was helped out well by Darren Stolp. Hammond running some time. Bruins playing a game of four-corner keep away now with 55 seconds left in Majors minor. Stolk off for Morris through the neutral zone. Again, they open things up, and Hammer drills it clear. Brian Straub. Dallas Stars property here on loan, almost stripped by the clever John Morris. Well, he's good with the stick. Okay. 
At center, Wilson will let it come through for Craig Fisher. Fisher diving into the attack zone. Drop pass, Wilson. Stick checked immediately by Hammond. Clock ticks down, 20 seconds in the shorthanded situation. Bruins ahead 4-2 on home ice tonight. Aljeg Mikulczyk. Left wing side, LeBlanc. Harche right there. Fisher moving back in for Moncton. Fisher stalled by Hammond. Hawks keep it. Tail end of the power play. Bloomston down low. His feed collected. Working out. Wrist shot. Rick Lee it was helped away and forced over top. As John LeBlanc waited and waited and waited, nothing came to him. Shot was deflected out of play. Well, they had a lot of traffic in front of the net. LeBlanc and Wilson uh, looked as if they just waited a little too long for a play to develop. You're going to see this puck go into the corner. Off the stick of number 14, Otto Brumston. Now watch what happens. They've got a man wide open in front. There's Wilson, but they just can't get the puck to him. Finally, they wait, 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 and pretty soon there's enough traffic in front to deflect it over the back glass. But that, if they had that pass been moved immediately right to the front of the net to Wilson, they'd have had a splendid scoring chance. That great season you see there for LeBlanc came with the Cape Breton Oilers a couple of years ago. The top development affiliate in the AHL, the Edmonton Oilers. LeBlanc had 48 last year with these Moncton Hawks. Working, Hamilton, Nova Scotia. Yep, working in tandem with Andy Brickley is uh, not a bad way to make your living. If you're a goal scorer, that is. Seven and a half gone by in the second period. Bruins ahead by two. Fisher with a great move. Right on in. Turnaround drive block. Rebound right through the goal mount. Delayed penalty coming up. The Providence Bruins will be a man short when we bring you back to the Civic Center. Four two Bs on Nesson. Hockey East has had 23 Hobie Baker finalists in the last three winners. If you want to see the best college hockey players in the country, come and watch your favorite teams play to get your tickets to Boston College Games. Call 617-552-GO-BC for Maine 207-581-BEAR. This, this is a bit of retaliation. Smith whiffs on Fisher right there at the line. Watch him. He's heading back toward the net. Fisher going toward the net, trying to draw it back to the backhand. And here comes Dennis Smith. He's just going to pile drive right through the pile. Over it goes. Charging on Dennis Smith. I just think he got a little mad at him. The roughing penalty. But it, he got a little mad at himself for uh, whiffing there at the blue line. And that was a little bit of retaliation. Nobody likes to be embarrassed. A roughing call. Easily could have been charging since he had about a 10 stride head start. So, the Hawks with a power play opportunity. Harche and Murray dig deep on the draw. Milan Tihi keeps it and fires. It was broken up before it reached Mike Bales in the nets tonight for Providence. Andy Brickley, very good, operating behind the goal. Off on the far wing. Brickley now has it again. Weimer watching. Back door, here's Vito Lynch. Off for Murray, pretty play. And the Hawks are within one. Well, you said that Brickley is pretty good behind the net, and he sets it up beautifully here. Vito Lynch and Murray... But Brickley was the key. They played a little give and go. Watch right here. Here's a chase into the zone. Chasing Brickley. Here comes Vita Lynch into the corner of the play. He's going to come and get that pass. Now watch what happens. Gets the pass now. Defender comes over. Open in front of the net. You know, it's like dominoes. When you start to break that down, you play that give and go rotate out of the corner. And they just got the Providence Brewers defense running around. Murray gets the goal from Vita Lynch, but Brickley made the pass to Vita Lynch. He beat his man from the sideboards. Guy at the corner covered him. Leave Murray alone in the net. Murray got the goal. The Hawks captain said thank you very much. Providence four. Moncton three. 11.50 to go in the second period tonight on Nesson. David Capuano scales in. Todd Copeland got a goal in the first for the Hawks. He took a heavy hit there. Delivered by Cam Stewart. Roll off towards the goal. Wayne Doucette was able to snare for Moncton. The outlet for Straub taps it along. Jernander couldn't get it. The puck struck linesman Mark Messier. Hawks must regroup at center. Bilesma chugging through the neutral zone. Bilesma ridden out by Roloff. Cherviakov, John's defense partner, came to get it. Stewart shouldered from the puck by Copeland. This is Jernander weaving out of the corner. Short side drive block. Rebound loose in front of Bales. Another penalty is coming from referee O'Halloran. And you hear him explain it. 
Well, Bilesma is not making a very satisfactory case to the referee there. And I'm glad he chose the word baloney because that's a big improvement over some of what we hear. So we'll give referee Halloran, oh, Halloran a big star for baloney. This could be goaltender interference. Murray got his 17th goal, six on power play from Brickley and Vita Lynch. Yeah, if they're going to get Doucette, it's going to be goaltender interference. And that was uh, interesting. And that's exactly what the call is. Doucette, goaltender interference. Watch it here, number 26. You saw how he did that little sidestep to be right behind Bales, and that's what the referee called. Had he just continued along, along the top of the crease, I don't think he would have gotten the call. There was one little nudge there, but after that it was more of a screen. A push from behind. Yep. Nine minutes into the second period. The Hawks have outscored the Bruins 2-1 here in the middle frame. Providence holds the 4-3 advantage overall. Providence has a power play goal. Joe Talk, seventh power play goal, 19th goal of the season. Collecting for Moncton, Russ Romanuk, an excellent skater, plays it back to center. Jim Weimer waits for his team to get on side, now cranks it up. Martin Santamore looking for it. Santamore with Sergei Joltak's help. Joltak, finesse to the right point, Weimer. Off for Hammond, one touch to the corner. Stewart left it for Joltak. He was crunched there by fellow Latvian Harris Vito Lynch. Joltak, right point, Weimer fires. That caught Beauregard's stick in the side of the cage. And Romanuk was able to clear back. A delayed penalty coming yep. against the Bruins. Bye-bye power play. And it's going to be on Weimer. He's going to get a roughing penalty. This is very similar to the penalty he got before. He slides down the boards and gets the hands up, and he's going to get the penalty call. Bruins penalty, penalty is going to, power play is going to be neutralized. Hey, O'Halloran does a great job of getting away from those guys once he makes a call. Makes a call. Watch it right here. There's Weimer on the slide. Hands up. It's called for roughing. Jim Weimer likes to step up and pinch from his point position. Well, what he's got called for tonight, the two penalties have been getting his hands up in the guy's face. That's a no-no. So the Bruins had just 52 seconds on their power play. We'll skate at even strength for the next 68 seconds, and Moncton will have an advantage. We approach the midway portion of the hockey game with Providence ahead by one. Straub lost his balance, penalty of in. Joltak fanned on the wrist shot. Joltak sneaking out from behind the goal. Straub took care of him with the help of Craig Fisher. Joltak with a magnet on that stick manages to get the puck back again. Off to Ken Hammond. Kantaleev skipping out of the corner. Hammond set a little pick for him. Straub fought through it. Brian Straub off to a steady defender, Todd Copeland. Ross Wilson will deflect the center. Four aside for the next 25 seconds. Darren Stolp, deep in his own zone. Stolp, four checked by Wilson. Panaleev takes over now for Providence. Grigory Panaleev shifting gears through the neutral zone. Panaleev tugged down. Stroud wanted a penalty. O'Halloran will not comply. O'Halloran's right. Joltak. Deeks away from Copeland. Spots it to Hammond. Bruins are a man short. Hammond right in. Drives wide. Stick side of Beauregard. Five on four for Moncton. The next 45 seconds left in Weimer's penalty. Joltak and Doucette tangle at center. Bruins clear back. Mike O'Connell and Mark Kumpel want to get a line change for some tired penalty killers. Murray will clear it in. Bales will usher that aside for Dennis Smith. Smith eludes the challenge of Murray and clears. Arto Bloomston, the quarterback of the Moncton power play. Left side, McCoolchuk. He turns it over. Fred Knipscher was lying in wait at center. That was a great example of back checking by Knipscher there, coming right through the middle of the ice in excellent position. And then he hits the little nine iron the length of the ice. Jim Weimer exits the penalty bench. Now, Bruins back to full strength. 8.15 to go in the second. Bloomston leads the advance for Moncton. Vito Lynch blocked away. And Knipscher will step to center. Hook checked immediately by Vita Lynch. Taken back by McCoolchick. Moncton revs it up at center. This is Rob Murray. Drop pass. Andy Brickley closing and firing. Blocking glove save fails. And he'll squeeze. 4-3 Providence. 7.55 to go in the second. More after this on Nesson. 
Make this the winter you learn to ski better with tips and techniques from Ski's top teaching pros. Found in this all-new Ski Better Now video, yours free. Call this toll-free number today, and Ski Magazine will send you this video free with your paid subscription of only $11.94. Enjoy a full season of Ski Magazine, America's top-rated magazine for skiers. Beginner or expert, reach new levels of ability. Call today to get Ski Magazine, plus your free video, and Ski Better Now. Mike Bales comes out aggressively to stop this shot from Andy Brickley. Brickley gets a feed. Doesn't waste any time shooting this one from the top of the circle. See if Bales about five feet outside of the top of the goal crease aggressively comes out to shot, stop that one as Andy Brickley was looking right there for goal number 15. Challenge the shooter. You can hear the goalie coaches saying that over and over and over. 7.50 to go in the second period. Providence clinging to a one-goal lead. Capuano trips it to center. Morris ridden out by Romanuk. Russ Romanuk off for Todd Copeland. Copeland, former New Jersey Devil property. Ahead on the wing, Jernander bumped to with the Hammond. Morris takes back for Providence. John Morris diving away from Romanuk's check. Morris will leave it to the corner. Copeland and Capuano. Digging, Morris kicked it loose. Hammond cheating in from the point position. Off to Cam Stewart. Now Capuano once again. Tried to feed the slot broken up by Copeland and the puck will bounce to center ice. Seven minutes remaining in the second period. 4-3 Bruins ahead. Cam Stewart just on reassignment from Boston today as the Bees headed west. Stewart in. Tried to split two defenders. Nothing doing there. Beauregard with the easy grab. Talking to Bob Tyndall, who's uh, director of scouting with the Bruins uh, between the first and second period, uh, about the thought behind Stewart moving down, and they just uh, were going out on the long, long road trip. They get Kovatolnov up, trying to pop a few goals because he's a goal scorer, but they wanted Stewart to play. They wanted him to get some playing time and to get more than they think he would have been getting on the road trip, so they've got him down here with the Providence Bruins to get some PT, and, and he helps his team. He's a, he's a good hockey player. He's had some trouble getting on track with Boston, particularly from the scoring standpoint had one the other night from just standing in front of the net with a deflection but uh, he's a good hockey player and he'll be a big help to the, uh, the Providence Bruins because he brings them some quickness up front would love to snap him out head coach Michael Connell would love to snap him out of his uh, goal scoring drought just three goals in 49 NHL games Stewart is in Providence Kubert Kalnoff is with the big club in LA to battle the great one tomorrow night Hawks with a chance Bilesma skipped it through the goal mount Makulchik loads from the right point. Deflection score! And they're going to count it. It was deflected up high by someone in front of Mike Bales. And another fluke has drawn the Moncton Hawks even at four. Well, this is a funny kind of goal. Makulchik, Oleg Makulchik with the shot from the right point. Bales has no idea where the puck is. He's going to duck. You watch Bales. That's tipped on the outside. Bales ducks right inside the crossbar, right underneath the crossbar. Might have been tipped more than once. Bales has no idea where the puck is. There's one tip. See Straight Bales in. duck? Straight in off that tip on the outside. Yeah, he'd have got hit right in the head with that had he not ducked. So McCoolchick will get credit for it. His fourth of the season and the fourth of the game for Moncton. It's a brand new hockey game. Tied at four with 6.18 to go in period two. The Hawks beginning a five-game, nine-day road trip here in Providence tonight. And so far, so good. The coach checks fourth from Bilesma at 13.35. Robbie Laird instructing the troops back behind the Moncton bench. Fisher, Brickley, Wilson across the top for the Hawks. Providence responds, Berdnikoff, Knipscher, and Todd Harche. Even strength, five aside, even up on the scoreboard, four apiece. Jim Weimer back to get it for Providence. High off the glass and out, gloved down by Knipscher. Moved along, intended for Harche. Tried to slip screen by Ross Wilson, who got in his way. Berdnikoff. Left wing. Weimer. Cross ice. Harche just missed on the far post. Fisher able to clear to center. Weimer flips to the far wing. Harche will race. Bloomston is there. Arto Bloomston. 
finish born Moncton defender. Around the dasher and out by Brickley, the length of the ice. This will be icing when Dennis Smith makes the touch-up. We're even up at four tonight in Providence. More AHL action to come on Nesson. Dashing through the snow doesn't have to dash your style. Not when you drive a Dodge Intrepid. Intrepid ES takes the chill off winter driving with available ABS brakes, traction control, and dual airbags. And a price tag as low as $20,155 can surely take the chill off your budget. Of course, each dealership negotiates its own prices. Actually, with standard features like AM, FM, cassette, rear defroster, fog lamps, and more, you could call Intrepid an extremely well-equipped snowmobile. See the great selection of Intrepids at your Dodge dealer today. Sergei Burdnikov does a nice job finding an open man right here. Carries a puck across the line. Finds Weimer. Weimer finds Hache. Hache with the shot. Shoots it wide. Excellent scoring chance for Hache. That didn't miss by much. Fractions of an inch on the left side. Todd Hache. His alma mater's got a big game Monday night as they play the Boston College Eagles in the final of the beam puck. Very anxious is Todd to watch that one, but not before this one is done. RJ, the lone Providence Bruin to play in each and every AHL game this season with Michael Connell's club. He's had a career best year in terms of offensive standings. 4-4. 5-15 to go in the second period. Moncton Hawks in town tonight for Providence. David Capuano flips ahead. Morris, shoulder checked by Hawk captain Rob Murray. Bilesma, stick checked by Capuano. And Wayne Doucette carried the puck in off sides. Ruled by linesman Fred Campatelli. Five, one, uh, four to four the score, 501 remaining in this second period. Grigori Panaleev for the Providence Bruins and Rob Murray and Oleg Mikolchuk for the Moncton Hawks have done the scoring in the second period. Two unanswered goals have tied the game up. The last one at 13-35 at four to four. Bruins, winners of eight of their last 11, unbeaten in four straight on Civic Center ice. That's a season best. As they entertain the Moncton Hawks tonight, Russ Romanuk clears in. Mike Bales with instructions for Darren Stolk. The first one was to get out of the way of John LeBlanc. Stolk, again away from LeBlanc's checking. Darren Stolk drives it high off the glass. Beauregard didn't slow it down. Stewart there first for the Bruins. Again, around the horn it comes. Romanuk with a little, nice little deflection for Straub, who couldn't get it out. Capuano two on one. Stewart in. Backhand blocked by a diving Milan Tihi and covered by Beauregard. Uh, Stewart was played pretty, uh, rather, Capuano was played pretty well off the puck. That was fairly well defended as the Moncton Hawks came into the zone. Capuano, once he got the puck over, was looking for the pass back, but he was defended nicely there by Brian Straub. Straub worked him right off the angle, and once the watch is right here, you're gonna see the defender Straub, 22. Pass is gonna come in here, and then Capuano's gonna continue to the net. But watch what happens. Just move right off the play, right here. Good back checking effort, right there. Keep him off the play, deny the pass. Good play. Defensive work. A little crazy telescoped, but it was a good play. <laughs> Mark Major tries Stefan Beauregard, and he'll cover that up. That was our Sammy Snake line. We haven't seen <laughs> Sammy Snake for a while. As Mark Major gets into a little verbal altercation. Major not afraid to mix it up, nor is uh, Todd Copeland, the man uh, with whom he was screaming. Well, Major's had a reasonably decent penalty season with 111 minutes. He's uh, just be behind Darren Banks on the... Providence Bruins team. Jamie Huscroft's up with the big club now. He, he must have been up there too. He might. His oh, Darren. Here. Darren Banks is up there and working back into the lineup off a shoulder injury. Jamie Huscroft is among the top 10 all time in the AHL. Now getting an extended look from the Boston Bruins. Well, he can play defense and he can play forward, and that may keep him there for a little while. Four minutes to go. Second period. Sergei Joltar fires. Flagged down by Beauregard and. He thought better of playing the puck. He'll squeeze for a whistle again. Copeland and Major say hello. Yeah, we have Joltok saying hello on the outside to Murray. And a referee finally seeing enough. Going to give a couple guys a visit to the box. 
while our attention was uh, looking at Major and company, Grigory Pantaleev has made his way down the dressing room runway back into the Providence Bruins uh, dressing room with athletic trainer Jerry Foster as Major and Murray are ushered to the penalty bench. These teams very even on the scoreboard tonight and also over the last 11 games. Moncton's 8-3 in the last 11. The Providence Bruins 8-2-1. Providence has won the only meeting this year back on January 19th. They beat Moncton in Moncton 5-3. A win tonight would put the Providence Bruins over 500 for the first time this year. First time they drew to 500 uh, back over the... Uh, that's your note. Last whiff. That's, that's your note. I read it before Thank the game. Thank you very much. I read it, and I want to give appropriate credit. It's your note. It was in your notes, and I read it before the game, and I made sure I marked it down, and I said if they win tonight, over 500. It's been a mountain to climb back, but Mike O'Connell and Mark Kumpel have uh, watched their team battle and battle and battle and back to 500 for the first time since early in October last weekend, and now looking to go over the crest. Knipscher fires through a screen, blocked wide of Beauregard. Brickley. Feeds back behind the goal for Mikulczyk. Oljeg Mikulczyk carefully ahead. Fisher, nice break out for Brickley. He'll slope back to center. Brickley will open it up. Two teams skating, four aside for the next 90 seconds. 3.20 to go in our second period. Brickley sends it down. Icing waved as Mike Bales was forced to play. Knipscher. Away from Teehees checking. Fred Knipscher, a goal getter tonight for Providence. Knipscher lunging into the attack zone. Knipscher working wide, tried to feed it around Mikulczyk, who applied the hook. Brickley uses the boards as an extra player to get the puck to Milan Tihi. Tihi back off for Brickley through the neutral zone. Finds a gap between the defenders, gets dumped. Watch the penalty, none from Dan O'Halloran. 2.50 to go in the middle period as Sergei Joltox in full stride. Joltox fires, deflected away by Copeland over the back glass. I think referee O'Halloran has done a pretty good job tonight. There have been two non-calls that were absolutely correct, that being the second. One was on, I think it was Joel Tarker Panaleev, and the other one on Brickley. Brickley saw that he was losing control of the puck coming through the, the split days. He loses control right there. Now he feels, well, I might as well try and draw one here. <laughs> yeah, I think if we even stayed with Brick, we might see a little smile come to his face. You can talk to him about that in between That's, periods. That wasn't even close. Yeah. <laughs> That was that not, close. not in the ilk of a former teammate, John Carter, who was so good at drawing yeah. penalties. You can razz Brick about that in between uh, the second and third periods. Andy Brick would be Bob's guest. The scoreboard, as you can see, with 2.43 to go. The Hawks have battled back from a two-goal deficit. I want to check and see if he's going to load up his team again this summer for the UNH outing, see if he can have back-to-back wins. But there's some real question about the eligibility of <laughs> some of the guys he brought. You know, it's an ongoing question as to whether they were legal or not. Pretty good golfer, eh? Well, he was that day. Russ Romanuk won the draw. Arto Blumston was challenged by Sergei Joltak. Blumston greeted by Pantaleev and Joltak. Pantaleev's stay in the dressing room was very brief. Copeland, outlet, too hot to handle for Romanuk. Hammond, back off, Joltak. Little aerial pass sends in Hammond with Pantaleev. Cut off at the pass by Todd Copeland. Blumston lost it. Joltak on it for Providence. Still four aside for the next 20 seconds. Grigori Panaleev looking to use that open ice. Panaleev busting towards the goal. Panaleev to the goal mound. Ridden away by Bloomston. Panaleev still with it. Grigori pulls to the backhand. His feed down low intended for Roloff was snared. Harris Vitolinch for Moncton. Off the skate boots of Romanuk. Back behind Bales once again. Ken Hammond slicing through the neutral zone. Hammond one hands it ahead. Jernander stopped that rush. Oljeg Mikulczyk now for Moncton. Harche stepped in his way. Jernander spun it off the boards and out. Roloff back off to Harche. Cross ice delivery. Knipscher couldn't grab it. The Hawks on the clearance. Sergei Burdnikov packing back into the Bruins zone. Darren Stoltz unable to clear. Jernander rolls it back behind Bale. Stolk again with a good hit on Bilesma. 70 seconds to go in the second period. Jernander's drive snared by Bales and he'll squeeze. Well, Jernander with the drive, but Bilesma was the problem as coming uh, from his left to right in front of Bales. Bilesma was trying to pick up a screen right in front of Bales on that Jernander shot. Watch Bilesma come out of the corner working against Stoltz. There he is right there. He's going to see it. See, reads it, comes right to the net. There he is. Stoke doesn't keep him out of the play, and he goes right in front of Bales. 
on that shot by Jananda. See, Bale started to look out to the outside to see what was happening. Bowsman saw the shot, anticipated the play, shot right to the net, and got ahead of uh, Stoltz, wasn't able to keep him out of there. Mike Bales making his first appearance for Providence uh, since January 26th when he beat the Springfield Indians here 5-3. John Blue is his backup tonight to Bob, and Blue has uh, played all five games prior to tonight's action since being reassigned by Boston. Big Ten connection. Blue from Minnesota and Bales from Ohio State. CCHL and WCHA. Out to center. This is John Morris leading the rush. Weimer joining the play from defense. Weimer to the goal mound. Stewart digging. Morris trying to hunt it free. David Capuano couldn't control as it was batted off of his stick. Ross Wilson, Moncton's leading scorer, will push it into the Bruin defensive territory. Under a minute to go. 43 seconds to be specific. Weimer off the boards and out. 4-4 your score, second period. David Capuano clears it right to the waiting stick of Arto Bloomston. Bloomston did not get it by Capuano. David Capuano pirouettes away from Fisher to the goal mound. Wrist shot block. Morris follow-up chance didn't get through. Hammond opportunistic as always. Backdoor score! Cam Stewart! Great play right here. Watch him and watch right here. He's gonna make the defender think he's gonna go out to the pole, out to the point with the puck. Watch what the defender does. Hey, watch him. He's gonna slide out that way. Instead of going out to the point, should have just stayed right on him and play him off the play. He was the closest man to him. Hammond comes back inside, throws it across. Stewart with the goal. Great influence by Hammond. And you can see the defender just go right off him toward the point. He, when he saw that, he just read it right back inside. When you're that close to a guy, it's a possession play in the zone. you got to stay on him all the way. You're the nearest man to him. Play him off. Somebody takes your position outside of the point. That's the most dangerous guy. you got to take him. Veteran recognition by Hammond late in the period to go for the kill offensively. And he found Stewart for the layup. Bruins with a late chance. Cutting in off sides. Conniption. Crowd didn't hear the whistle of linesman Mark Messier, but it was there. Offsides against Providence. A seesaw battle tonight. Bruins have a 5-4 lead late in period two. Well, that's exactly what the Bruins sent Cam Stewart down here for, to get some playing time and to get some goals. This is just a dandy play, you know. Make him think it's going outside. Throw it across. You know, you got to... The goaltender there has got to second-guess himself a little bit, Stefan Beauregard. He's got to poke check that puck away. Yep, he made a move for it. He whiffed on it. And for that reason, Mike Bales and the Providence Bruins take the 5-4 lead with them to the dressing room after two. We've played 40 minutes tonight in Providence. Our second intermission is next when we're back. Andy Brickley, the venerable Moncton Hawk Center, will join our Bob Norton. All that and more to come in between periods two and three tonight on Nesson. Welcome back, everybody. We're here between the second and third periods of the Providence Civic, Providence Civic Center. The Providence Bruins lead the Moncton Hawks by a score of 5-4. to two, four. Kenny Hammond opened up the scoring with his first from Fred Knipster and John Rolf at 132. Andy Brickley made it 3-2. to two. Favorite Providence is 15th from Russ, Wol uh, Russ Wilson and Ardo Blumstein. Then at 4-2, to two, Gregory Panalea from Martin Santamore and Ken Hammond. Bring it back to 4-3 to three for Moncton. Rob Murray is 17th from Andy Brickley and Harris and Harris Lynch, and that was at eight minutes. And then tying the score at 13-35 at 4-4, to four, Oleg Mikulchuk, funny kind of goal. Puck is going to work around the zone, and Mikulchuk is going to get it out on the right point. And it's going to be tipped, deflected on the inside. Watch, here's the shot. Deflection. We thought might have been another one, but Bales ducks, and the puck goes right in under the crossbar. Bales had no idea where the puck is. He knows now it's behind him. Oleg McCulchuk's fourth from Dan Bilesma. That made it 4-4 four at four, 13-35. And watch right here. This is a great play. This is Hammond. Now, you and I think that he's going to move the puck out to the point. Now, this defender, with Hammond in this position, the defender has got to play Hammond, concede the pass out here. If they switch responsibilities, this defender can now get out and cover the point. But you got to play him man to man. Now, watch what he does. Makes him think point. Watch right there. Now, the defender separates. And you got another defender working out there. So now what you have is Hammond being able to wheel back to the inside, 
Moncton's in trouble because they're outnumbered inside now. He just makes a pass across Stewart Camp to the left right there. You see the goaltender try to poke check the puck away. When he lost it, right on the left side was Cam Stewart, and Cam put it away. Stefan Beauregard unable to stop that centering pass, and for Stewart, sent down here to get some ice time and get some goals. Cam Stewart gets his first with the Providence Bruins. He has some youngsters enjoying the game. Some Nesson Painters caps on Nesson Painter cap night with the Providence Bruins. Did we give those out tonight? We sure did. How come I didn't get one? We I always miss out on the we'll painter cap. We'll take care of you. We'll take care I of you. I want a painter cap. Yeah, holy mackerel. <laughs> Whenever they give out painter caps, my kid gives me the dickens when I get home because I bring home no painter caps. 5-4 <laughs> Bruins trying to make their way up in the Northern Division standings as we take a look around the American Hockey League. Portland and Albany have lost today, so a Providence win moves them within one of third place. Adirondack continues to roll. They have a six-point lead now against the Pirates. In the Southern Division, tightly bunched as always. Hershey's starting to open it up a little bit, Bob, but after that, it's uh, eight points separating the final four teams in that division. And the Maple Leafs have been the season-long leaders in the Atlantic Division. Moncton has improved its play and improved its play, and they're gaining ground on the St. John Flames very swiftly. Well, Adirondack has been so strong this season in the Northern Division, it would be very, very easy to figure that they would have some of the top guns around the American Hockey League, and they do, as we'll take a peek now at the scoring statistics around the American Hockey League. Rich Chernamaz with the St. John's Maple Leafs, a player assistant coach who's doing so very well. But there you see two Red Wings in second and fourth place position. Mark Peterson, 75 points, 40 of them goals in 49 games. Goaltenders, young uh, rookie Kevin Hodson for the Adirondack Red Wings has been marvelous all season long. Frederick Shabbat gave the Providence Bruins a helping hand last night as he blanked the Albany River Rats. Byron Defoe has been a Bruins nemesis all season long, and Andre Trefilov is back down from the Calgary Flames, working with their top AHL affiliate in St. John, New Brunswick. You know, it's interesting that that Providence Bruins team, uh, Pro the uh, Portland team, has done as well as they have in their first year back in the league after being a Bruins affiliate for so long. But uh, that club, is it's in a place in Maine, and we've seen it that when it's well promoted and put together, and when they get the momentum going, it's it's, it's a great draw. The people like it up there at the Civic Center. Really, they've, they've done a super job rekindling a lot of the good feelings that uh, were there when the Maine Mariners were in Portland, Maine, and now acting as the Portland Pirates, the top development affiliate of the Washington Capitals in the American Hockey League. They are playing before some incredible crowds, night after night, it seems, and they're producing excellent... Uh, games. They're right in it. They're fighting. They're very, very difficult to beat. They've had the Providence Bruins number this year. They've beaten them six of the 11 times they've played. Well, when I was up in Maine last weekend, there was a lot of excitement around the Portland team, and there's a lot of people talking about them, and of course, they're talking about minor league baseball in Portland as well, so it's a city on the move, and it's always been one of my favorite places, but it's a, and that rink is a great place. I say rink, that arena is a great place to watch, uh, watch a hockey game. For the latest sports news and highlights, tune in to Nesson Sports Desk every weekday morning from 5 to 9, and weekend mornings from 6 to 11. Nesson Sports Desk keeps you up to date on the latest from the world of sports. Make Nesson Sports Desk part of your morning routine. Providence Bruins head coach Mike O'Connell is going to shake it up a bit here in the third period. He's going to go to John Blue to protect the 5-4 lead. He has given Mike Bales the hook. Well, you know, on the other side of that, uh, uh, John Blue, they, they need to win, and John Blue, uh, John Blue is a veteran performer in this league. You know, I don't know how much you could fault Bale for anything that happened in that, uh, uh, f the first goal possibly, because he just didn't have any uh, idea that the puck was coming. The last one was a situation that, uh, you know, that puck was shot from the outside, and he never even saw it. There's Mike Bales, and I think uh, I overheard both goaltenders mentioning that Mike O'Connell was uh, very non-committal about who his starter would be tonight. He did not let Bales know until late. And with the Bruins holding a 5-4 lead, Mike O'Connell has gone to... Uh, his recent ace, John Blue, is the number one in town. Mike Bales will back him up, and David Littman, Bob, is now out of the picture. The Boston Bruins have made a financial settlement with him. He is out of his contractual obligations and is on loan now in Fredericton. Here's Beauregard. He was victimized by his own inability to stop the centering pass on the tie-breaking goal here in the late stage of the second period, but he's a veteran performer. He's had quite a uh, tour this year, too, since... Since 1992, he's been traded four times, Joe. Yeah, 
Winnipeg Jets' general manager, or should we say former Jets general manager, Mike Smith, liked to shuffle Stefan Beauregard, moving him round and round in a number of deals, but a lot of NHL clubs would love to have him. Uh, Mike Smith got shuffled himself. Yes. I had a chance to talk to Sean Cody, who's the uh, pro scout for one of the pro scouts for the uh, Winnipeg Jets franchise. Has been there for a, a number of years. He's down here along with Bob Tyndall watching the game. Bob Tyndall's uh, Bruins head scout. Bob Tyndall and I go back a long, long time. Uh, he was first uh, helping me find junior hockey players up in uh, Toronto, Ontario. He helped Jack Parker and I. He helped Jack more than he helped me. <laughs> Joe Lyons is also in attendance tonight. New England regional scout for the Boston Bruins. A couple of gentlemen in also with him from Czechoslovakia. So a lot of people taking notes tonight on the uh, Providence Bruins. I see Joe Lyons all around the place. Saw him down at uh, a couple weeks ago down at Tabor. Watching Northfield Mount Hermon and Tabor play down in Marion, Mass. So he goes from Marion, Mass to the, uh, to the Providence Civic Center. That's not too far, really. The recipe for ice repair is easy. Just add water and stir. Fred Campitelli doing the honors with some groundskeeping, quote-unquote, and we'll get underway in the third period. 5-4, Providence protecting the lead. They've been very, very good at that this year. In fact, uh, coming into tonight's action, the Bruins, when leading after two, are 17-2-3. and three. Underway. Glad you've tuned in tonight. Alongside Bob Norton, I'm Joe Beninati with you tonight on Nessa. Sergei Joltak to the front, off the side of the cage. Copeland. Grappling there. Panalea, right side. Hammond waits. Crowd imploring him to shoot. Ken didn't pull the trigger. Joel Tock wheeling away from Copeland. Copeland made the steal. Give it right to Martin Sanamore. Newcomer in the Providence Bruin lineup. Sanamore, former property of the Ottawa Senators. Leaves to Grigori Pantalea. Bruins dominating the early play here in the third. Joel Tock couldn't maneuver by the defense of Craig Fisher. And Moncton will take possession. Good work by that forward line. They head to the bench for the ship change. 50 seconds into the third. Providence protecting the one goal lead. Harche, Knipscher, and Cam Stewart out now for Mike O'Connor. Stewart with a steal. And the drive blockered away by Stefan Beauregard. Harche swivels one to the front. Intercepting Moncton and playing to center. Ross Wilson. Wilson skims one in. Romanuk, a very smooth skater, gets there. Weimer tackled to Romanuk, who went head first to the backboards and is slow to his skates. Referee O'Halloran with a whistle. Romanuk cannot understand why there was not a penalty call there. Watch this. Weimer. Hard to see. Might have been a stick. Jim Weimer just played a little game of vole. Yeah, let, he was just uh, trying to get out of the way. Romanuk go right by him. Russ Romanuk for the Fighting Sioux of North Dakota where he played his college hockey from Winnipeg, Manitoba. He had been playing and preparing for the Lillehammer 94 games with Team Canada up until 15 games ago when he joined the Moncton Hawks. Winnipeg Jet property and has been on a tear since joining Robbie Laird's club. Notice Paul Correa had three assists today in the uh, Canadian national team's win over the Italian team. Oh, what a slick player he is. Robert Petrovicki played with Slovakia today. Petrovicki, Hartford Whalers property. Well, was Peter Stastny, yep. and that was a surprise as they uh, tied the Swedes 4-4. Petrovicki we've seen on Nesson this season with the, the Springfield Indians. 18 and a half to go. Regulation time now. Providence 5, Moncton 4. John Blue is on in relief of starting goaltender Mike Bales. Roll off, right side. Verdnikov clears it down. Icing will be waived. Milan Tihi takes the handoff from Beauregard. Hawks unable to clear. Plumston in a struggle with Roloff. Here's a two-on-one developing. LeBlanc with Vitalinch to the slot. Blue alert made the good poke check. And the crowd responds with a familiar blue chant. Verdnikov clears it in. Beauregard looking to his right. Verdnikov back behind the goal with Harche. Moncton wins the little battle. Dan Bilesma twists it to center. Icing coming up as Dennis Smith chugs back to get it. He touches up and there's your whistle. Two minutes, 13 seconds into the third. Bruin still ahead by one on Nesson. The faces of discovery are the faces of the world.
When you set your sights on the fascination of real-world entertainment, find yourself here. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. Jim Weaver got a little undecided how to play this two-on-one, but with the new ice surface, the puck got further in front of Fisher than he wanted it to. Centering pass, nicely knocked away by Blue, as you see right there. He had somebody right on the doorstep. Rob Murray. Harris Fiedelich. He looks like a guy would have 201 penalty minutes. Tough guy, and this is what he excels at, winning draws. John Morris... Uh, Pretty good in his own right, and just as we bait you and set you up for that, <laughs> linesman Fred Campitelli kicks them both out. Maybe Capuano and Doucette. Providence will control the draw. Dennis Smith waits for the players to get on side. Ken Hammond drills it in. McCoolchick did not clear. Hammond to the goal mouth, sticked away by Beauregard. John Morris. Chopped down by McCoolchick's checking. And the Hawks roll to center. Murray coughed the puck up right at the Bruin blue line. Hammond with help from Cam Stewart. Just on assignment from Boston today to the AHL ranks. Stewart has a goal tonight for Providence. It's the lead marker as we stand 5-4 with 17-10 to go in the third. Morris moving back with Stewart on his left. John Morris waits. Curls in now. Stick check well by Bilesma. Puck rolled for Beauregard, and he'll take no chances with that. He'll cover. I thought for sure Morris was going to try to find Stewart over on the right side. Stewart did a nice job of getting away from him, sliding off to the right. Usually Morris is pretty good at finding those guys, but what he was bothered there, and he just couldn't make much of a pass. Seeing it again, that's exactly what happened. Bilesma bothered him as he tried to move that pass across the right side. He's as good a guy as there is around the league at trying to find an open guy. He's a superb passer. John Morris can hold on to the puck so long as you can see there those points are good for the top spot in the Bruins scoring column he knows he had somebody open and he just wasn't able to get the puck to him and that comes with you know you just need to protect yourself better coming into the zone and keep Biles to stick away from you a regular 30 goal scorer Craig Fisher for the Hawks digging in on the draw there Joe talk to the slot center more stopped by Beauregard left wing side Grigory Pantaleev for Providence Pantaleev Spinning. Ross Wilson got in his way, and the Hawks will take over. This is Fisher, who joined Moncton via the trade route. Edmonton and Winnipeg making a deal. Clear in. Blue moves the puck very well. Off on the dash here for John Roloff, and he'll lob it down. Milan Tihi swings the net. Panaleev shoves him aside. Grigory Panaleev still locking horns with Tihi. Hawks move away. Carefully to center, Andy Brickley will casually lay it in, hoping Ross Wilson can get there, but there's the other element John Blue gives you, roaming way out of the net to play it. Stolp couldn't clear. Fisher, down low, Wilson. Wilson, bothered by Roloff. Roloff around the dasher, Santa Moore, with help from Sergei Joltak. Bruins clear. Joltak with Panaleev to center. Grigory Panaleev at the tail end of his shift. He makes a right turn and heads to the bench for a shift change. Approaching... Five minutes played in the third period. 5-4 for Providence. We have a whistle. It ice was icing. touched up. Looked like a Moncton player got there first. Yeah, it did to me too, but I think that they had icing in their minds. Yeah, Campitelli made the whistle. I thought he was going to go two-line pass, and Robbie Laird, nevertheless, the Hawks coach, barking. Those words not too kind for Craig Fisher. While Mike O'Connell exhorts the troops from the uh, Bruins bench. Claude Scott, the happy trumpeteer, doesn't appear too happy. Being escorted out. Looks like he might have been injured. Yeah, he does uh, one whale of a routine, and sometimes accidents may happen. Bruins a 5-4 leader, 15-40 to go in the third period. They win the draw. Hammond's one-timer sailed wide of Beauregard. Straub out on the left wing side. Romanuk was pinched. Hawks take over and clear. The veteran Jim Weimer poised to rip it back in. Beauregard slowed it down, but Stewart got there first with David Capuano. Stewart kicks one to the slot. LeBlanc takes it from Hahn. John LeBlanc for Moncton. Gave it up to Cranston, Rhode Island native David Capuano. 
Capuano, hook check on LeBlanc. That wins the puck to the point for Weimer. Weimer dumps it to the corner again. Capuano cycles out. David Capuano slots it. Cam Stewart, backhand down low, poke checked aside. Counter punching, back comes Moncton. Romanuk, two on two with Vito Lynch and Hammond and Weimer said no to that. Capuano will clear in. Line change on the go for the black and gold. Uncontested, Arto Bloomston races to center. Bloomston working in on Roloff now. Harche back checks, Romanuk to the front. There's Roloff protecting. On the wing dasher, Fred Knipscher, a goal scorer tonight. Heaves one to the left of Beauregard. Storming out of there, Todd Copeland for Moncton. Left wing pass, Jernander, again bottled up by Roloff, who stood tall. And the Bruins will send the, the Hawks packing back into their defensive zone. Stefan Beauregard waiting for a teammate to come and get it. Beauregard gave it up. Roloff down low. Knipscher pivots out of the corner. Roloff at the point position. Dumps it back. Burdnikoff hemmed away by Murray. Harche sealed to the dasher by Copeland. Four players back there in a scrum. And Dan O'Halloran, this evening's referee, has seen enough. He stops the play dead. I think Burdnikoff might have been on top of the puck. Or if he wasn't, he was obscuring the official's view of the puck. Sergei Burdnikoff. He's played pretty well since he's been picked up. He has. The 23-year-old Burdnikoff. And he's happy. Claude Scott, who is a regular in the National Hockey League with the Quebec Nordiques. And Makes about 12 visits a year to the Providence Civic Center, and they just love it. Craig Fisher, ready on the draw for Moncton. Gliding in to greet him, Sergei Joltak. Hawks win the faceoff. McCoolchik dives away from Santa Moore's checking, and out comes Moncton to center. Long drive. Fisher sticked away by John Blue. On in relief tonight for Mike Bales. Hawks threaten. Fisher rubbed out by Hammond. Hammond crunched by Brickley. The two veterans colliding there, and the Bruins win the battle. Here's the tricky Martin Santamor in. Inside out on Milan Teehee, who hung in there well. Teehee cancels Pantalea. Moncton able to clear. Moncton Hawks with a puck. The top development affiliate of the Winnipeg Jets in the AHL. McCoolchick drives it back. Ken Hammond backpedaling, and we have a whistle to delayed offside, delayed offside against Moncton. Well, we've gone about seven minutes without a score after a bunch of goals in that uh, second period, six to be exact. This copyrighted broadcast is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted to the New England Sports Network. Any rebroadcast or other use of the accounts of this game without the written consent of the Providence Bruins and Nesson is prohibited. If you're just tuning in tonight, Providence led 2-1 after one. 5-4 now, leading in the third, thanks to a late tally in the middle period from Cam Stewart. Cam Stewart from Ken Hammond. Providence looking to clear. Jim Weimer lofts one back into the Hawk defensive zone. Straub back skating away from Sergei Joltak. Straub couldn't clear. Roloff with a nice job to keep it in. 13 minutes to go in regulation time. 5-4 for the black and gold tonight. Hawks have iced the puck if Weimer gets there first. And he will. 5-4 Providence, 12.53 in the third. We'll have more after these words on Nesson. Expert advice and valuable information are at your fingertips every month in the pages of Field & Stream. From which lures work best to late season deer tactics, Field & Stream is the magazine that brings the outdoors home to you. Call now to get 15 action-filled issues of Field & Stream for only $14.95, a savings of over 60%, and this handsome sturdy field bag, free. Be a part of the Field & Stream tradition. Call today to enjoy your free field bag and over 60% savings on America's number one outdoor magazine, Field & Stream. Bob, a big chance here if the Bruins can hang on. Teams in second and third place tonight in the Northern Division have lost. And the Bruins can gain ground. Well, they got their defensive suit on because they're playing very well here in this third period, just not letting the Moncton team get very much offensively going. They made the goaltender switch to start the period, but their team play has been excellent from a defensive perspective in this period. Roll off, blisters one right on. And there was Beauregard to challenge. Leading by one are the Providence Bruins. Unbeaten in their last four in this building. 
and unbeaten in nine of their last 11 overall. These were two hot teams when they collided tonight. I tell you, Providence is doing a great job of turning stuff around in the center zone. If you want to play good defense, turn it around in the middle of the ice. Here's a turnaround. Rob Murray carving in. Murray from a bad angle slots one in Bilesma. Shanked it wide. At the right point, Copeland threw a screen. Blue was down to fight that away. Cutting in from the point position. Hawks with it. Behind the goal, Murray took the handoff from Straub, and we have a whistle. The net knocked from its moorings, but referee O'Halloran has a penalty call to come. Could it be Jim Weimer for the third time? I'm not sure. I thought originally the whistle was for the net being off. But the penalty is going to be against number six, John Roloff. John Roloff. Two minutes to be left the game. Well, that, what, what he must have done is knock the net off. That's what O'Halloran spotted. Roloff, you can tell. Yeah, let's see if Roloff... Oh, I don't know how intentional that is, Bob. Just just losing his balance. Uh, that was not a very good call. From what we saw, and we didn't see all of it, but it did not look to appear to be a very good call. The Hawks get the power play chance. Trailing by one. In the attack zone. Blanc score. John LeBlanc. Don't leave him alone too long because in the blink of an eye, it's in the back of the net. Well, it was one that they almost had out of the zone, and for LeBlanc, that's going to be goal number 23 on the season. They just, everything's out high, and Providence's defense is out high as well. They're just trying to work it out, work it out, can't quite get it in. As a result, everybody out high, LeBlanc left uncovered on the inside, puts it away. See, the whole defense is stretched because they almost have it out of the zone. They have a two-on-one on the inside, and LeBlanc puts it away. Goal number 23. You can see on the outside, Darren Stoke. Now, he's a defenseman on the inside, but he was on the play, and that's where he should have been. Stay on the play because it's a continuous play in the zone, but he wasn't able to make the play and stop it from coming back inside, and then they just got outnumbered. Moncton continues to be a very resilient foe tonight as the Bruins have been caught from behind, and LeBlanc looks for more. From a bad angle, he shoveled it through the goal mount. Panaleyev taps back to center. 11.43 to go in the third period. Sergei Zoltak was dumped. And now it'll be the Providence Bruins' turn with a manpower advantage. Dan O'Halloran spots Russ Romanuk. Got the lasso out, Bob. Oops, that's, that's a hook. John LeBlanc's 23rd goal of the season. We said before he had uh, 54 back in the 89-90 season for Cape Breton, 48 last year for Moncton. That's his 23rd goal of the year, his number eight on power play. Yeah, he's the AHL definition of sniper. Didn't waste much time with that one. John Assist LeBlanc. went to Arnold Blumston and Ross Wilson. They kiddingly refer to John LeBlanc as Jack White in Moncton. <laughs> Right off the draw, the Hawks dump the puck into the uh, penalty bench, so we'll do it over again inside the Moncton defensive zone. Moncton is the number two scoring team in the Atlantic Division coming into tonight's game with 212 goals. This is three five tonight, giving 217. Yeah, everybody looks up at the powerhouse in St. John's, Newfoundland. The Maple Leafs lead all 16 AHL clubs with 250 on their way into tonight's action. Providence enjoying a power play here. Joltok, right point for Jim Weimer. Weimer out high, back behind the goal. John Morris, flip feed, Joltok corrals. Sergei Joltok and John Morris will play catch. This is Ken Hammond, now Jim Weimer. Hammond waits, pressure comes from Murray. Joltok, quick pivot, Morris tried to work to the front, and Arto Bloomston made the good recovery. Yeah, he did. He made a nice play there because what uh, they were trying to do was hit the right defense and coming down from the right point. They had number 36, Jim Weaver, floating in from that right side, and that's the pass he intercepted. You just saw the power play time remaining. 10.50 to go in the third period. Now even at five. Number five for Providence, Ken Hammond skips one in. Oleg Mikulczyk there to ram back. Weimer held strong at the point. Cross ice delivery. Hammond will close and fire. Deflected wide. And a good job by Beauregard to snatch the rebound off the backboard. That shot was wide. Looked like there was an opportunity to bang that shot in on a deflection as coming from the left side. Sergei Joltok watched the shot and watched Joltok come into the camera from right to left. Here comes Joltok. Just misses. 
Then the puck goes off the boards. You want to play goal, you better beat Cat quick. Stefan Beauregard is just that. It's a pretty good night for defensemen. Goal and three assists. Came in at tonight's game with nine goals and 26 assists, so he goes out right now with 10 and 29. The points just keep on coming for Ken Hammond now, who's on a little bit of a point scoring streak. He's got points in six of his last seven games. Hammond quarterbacking the power play. Capuano steps in and drives, and that struck a Bruin in front. Fred Knipscher, very slow to his skates as the Hawks are able to clear. 40 seconds left in the minor, issued to Russ Roman up for hooking. Hammond deliberately to center, off for Joltak. Head and shoulder fake loosened him up from Rob Murray, but the pass back to the point went off target. John Roloff splits the gap. Here's Panaleyev in. On the backhand, love down Beauregard once more. Uh, Roloff may have read that play very nicely. Panaleyev right about at the P at center ice took the shoot. Down the middle, tried to split the defense. Roloff had it at the right side and makes a nice pass. Roloff sees him all the way. See him looking. Panaleyev through the middle. Off the skates. Backhand bid right in the feet of Beauregard. That's a tough stop, too. You're going to get down and pick that thing up. There's that patented Panalea of little stutter step, Bob. You and I have seen that so much. It just shakes the defenseman's timing and gives Grigori more room to deliver his shot. He's pretty clever. Very sneaky. We're past the midway portion of the third period. 9.59 to go in regulation time tonight at the Providence Civic Center. Alongside Bob Norton, I'm Joe Beninati with you on Nesson. Bruins looking to get the lead back. They have 15 seconds of power play time left. The Hawks will stall that rush and move back with one of their own. Jernander, guarded by Roloff. Jernander just pitched one to the net where John Blue was waiting. Three seconds now in Romanuk's penalty. The Hawks are at full strength. Panalea off to Morris. Tried to find Joltak in stride. Arto Blumston fed it off the boards to Romanuk, and he was canceled by Dennis Smith. This is Morris at center. John Morris feeds it along. Russ Romanuk makes the steal. Hammond will operate. Headman too far for Pantalea. Hawks in possession. Romanuk drives it in. Blue chopped at it but couldn't get there. Wilson bottled up by Hammond. Sergei Joltak came to lend a helping hand. Now down the right wing flank. Pantalea with a step. Grigori from a bad angle. Stopped by Beauregard. And then crashed to the end dasher by Todd Copeland. Ross Wilson will clear it in. John Blue will roam. Blue lifts it along the left wing glass. Wilson boxed by the defense of Darren Stolt. Fisher couldn't stick handled by Ken Hammond, who will clear for Providence. A tired bunch of Bruins head to the bench for the shift change. Eight and a half to go in the third. Tied up at five. Heavy hit there delivered. Cam Stewart steamrolled a Hawk defender. He ran right over Brian Straub. Bruins with the puck, Hammond to the corner to Hartje. Hartje, back for Hammond, loads it up, fires, blocked by Brickley. Hammond off the dasher again. Burdnikov, back behind the goal, there's Cam Stewart. Stewart tried to sneak away from Craig Fisher, who just got the skate in front of it, was able to lift it off the glass and out. Clock ticks down, eight minutes now to go in the third period. 5-5 draw in Providence tonight, AHL action. Bruins clear, icing is the call as it's touched. We're even at five, we're back in a moment on Nesson. Most people already know that a GMC Jimmy comes with features that give it all the strength of a truck and all the ride and comfort of a car. But what you may not know is that right now, it also features a lease that's never been more comfortable. The all-new Jimmy 24-month lease. Get to know one today at your New England GMC truck dealer. Well, I'll tell you, Cam Stewart puts a hit on former Black Bear University of Maine, Brian Straub. Ooh. What's that expression, down like a power window? Well, you know, it's, it's nice to see the kid come down and play hard. You know, sometimes the, the attitude players bring down here causes some trouble when they get here. But Stewart, uh, from what I've seen tonight, is that's what I say, ready to play. The cool chick tested John Blue, who is ready with a catching glove. 
Yeah, Blue looked like he had a pretty good look at that all the way. John Blue making his sixth appearance since being joining, since being reassigned rather from Boston. I think this is a good night for uh, for Cam Stewart. He's got some good hits in. He's got a confidence boost with a late goal in the second period. Those are the things that Boston was looking for. Yeah, you know, Michael O'Connell put him on the line with Morris and Capuano. That doesn't hurt either. Veteran nope. AHL performers, and they've gotten to the puck. He's been in good position. To roll out of bed and score with the way those two have been going. Right off the draw, screen John Blue. Watch that one hover over his head and wide. 7.40 to go in regulation time. We're even up at 5. Cam Stewart chasing after Milan Tihi. Cross ice and the Hawks will roll. McCoolchick carefully to center. Snakes back to get some breathing room. Now gives ahead for Bilesman to launch in. Smith. Pressure comes. Dennis Smith along the left wing board. Stewart is there. Crowd reacting as Wayne Doucette and Dennis Smith are entangled. I think Santa Moore might have a major penalty here. Possibility of a spearing call. We'll have to wait and see. That's not going to be the way to break into the lineup if they do hit Santa Moore with a stick infraction yeah. here. Well, he hit Murray with the stick. Martin Santa Moore is coming to the Providence penalty bench, and you see Dan O'Halloran about ready to give the penalty to the penalty timekeeper. It was right inside the Moncton blue line that Santa Moore hit Murray with the stick. It's a good sign that Santa Moore is seated in the penalty bench. This was just about the same time that Santa Moore was whacking him, but that started a little altercation in the corner. They can set themselves lucky if they get out of here with a two-minute penalty. Can and they it? have as it's up on the scoreboard. But the Hawks have been good on the power play. Their last tally was a manpower strike. You see all the particulars you need to know. Well, all of that luck attached to the Providence Bruins being a good third-period team is going to have to come to the floor right here. That's right. Unbeaten in 20 of the 22 decisions that they have carried a lead with them to the third, as they have done tonight. I was up at uh, Durham the other night watching New Hampshire play Merrimack. Merrimack is 10-0 and 0 with the lead after two periods. So, you know, a team that a lot of people don't think is a real good team, although I think they're getting better by the moment. 10-0 and 0 with the lead going into the third. John Roloff. Man just getting back to his skates there. You see the effectiveness for both teams. Month is two out of five. Providence one for five, 20% effectiveness. Uh, at 22% over the course of the year. And of course, uh, two for five at 40% is well above Moncton's percentage. Robbie Laird and Mike O'Connell, two coaches who are about polar opposites. O'Connell very laid back, Laird very high strung. His Hawks have a good chance. Chance for John LeBlanc that didn't get through. They misfired. Short-handed back come the Bruins. Sergei Joltak revving it up. Joltak stick checked well by Arto Bloomston. 6.50 to go in the third. Tied up at five. Hawks power play, 90 seconds. Dennis Smith greeted by two Moncton four checkers. Wilson, as you hear O'Halloran encouraging the defense to move the puck. Here's John Morris now. Morris finagled his way out of some traffic. John Morris, stick handling in, drops it for Sergey. Joltak fires, juggling, catching glove stopped by Beauregard, and he fought it off long enough for the whistle. Uh, those are two pretty clever guys heading across the blue line, Joltak and Morris. Morris made a nice little play here to, to make that pass to Joltak, watch the play develop, and then the end of the play, the shot, Morris going to try to draw the attention of two on him, then Joltak going this way. Now watch what happens here. Joltak's going to go this way and fire the puck back against the grain on the goaltender. Borgard has to be very alert here. Gets in, goes back against the grain, tries to get him going left and have to come back the other way. Very tough save here. He's going one way to cover the corner. Now you got to come back the other way and make the save. Beauregard was shifted way over, almost but, too far there. And as an ex-goalie, you know that when you start moving that right foot, pivoting over the left, Joe, I don't know how many know here, next goal. You're in big trouble. That's right. you got to come back the other way. It's very hard to do. You're coming back against your drive leg. The advantage for Beauregard is he wears his catching glove on his right hand. That's right. That would have been a stick glove save for John Blue or Mike Fails. Six minutes even, third period. 5-5 five, five score. It's been a beauty tonight from the Providence Civic Center. Happy to have you aboard on Nesson. Jernander. All right, check that. Andy Brickland. 
to the point. Stroud back off for Brickley. The pass uh, skipped over Brickley's stick. Quick pivot. Stroud pressured by Hartjay. Brickley challenged by Stolk. The rotation continues. Vitalich off to Brickley. Midpoint. Stroud drives. Sticks away blue. Rebound high in the air. Good job. Hammond and Stolk were knocking that away from the front. Vito Lynch splits the gap of the two Moncton defenders. Now well, there's a break. There's a break because they were under all sorts of pressure. Needed to change badly and Moncton helped them out throwing the puck out of the zone. Santa Moore's penalty is done. We're back to full strength with 5-10 to go in the third period. We're deadlocked at five. Hawks clear the puck. This could be icing if Weimer outskates Bilesma and he does. We will have you back to the Providence Civic Center in a moment. 5-5 draw on Nessie. Men's tennis headliners from the hottest stops on the international scene. Relentless action as the best unleash an awesome assault. Catch the best in men's tennis on Nesson, your ticket to the ATP Tour. Push it, pass it, drive it home. The nation's top conferences step out of the ice for non-stop board-banging excitement. Chill out with Prime's College Hockey Game of the Week. Miami goes to the cold against Michigan in collegiate hockey battle. Uh, John Boone makes a save here, but this puck goes way up in the air, and Stoke does a nice job of keeping his eye on the puck. Deflection up in the air, and Stoke bats it out from in front of the net. Nice play. Get up there and get it, big guy. Darren Stoke at six foot four, in good position to rebound. If we were playing round ball, he did the job there. You see the score with five minutes and three seconds to go in a noisy Providence Civic Center trying to cheer their local heroes on for the lead tally. Hawks with other ideas. Moncton steps back. Bilesman will clear it in. Blue will settle it down, and Blue will play it himself. Around the dasher, Jernander fires from a bad angle. That one fluttered wide and struck somebody right in the fanny in front. Morris will clear it in. Beauregard watches this one skip to the boards. Copeland off the dasher. Moncton on the clear away. Weimer steps in front of Wayne Doucette to take the puck back for the Bees. Ahead to Cam Stewart, causing a commotion as always with Arto Bloomston. Bloomston won the battle. Out for Wayne Doucette, former New York Islander property. Here's Jernander in, looked offsides, no call. That was offsides by a bunch and a very late whistle comes from linesman Mark Messier. You have to wonder how they missed that one because that was offside by feet. Well, section 107 here in the Providence Civic Center. There were about nine different linesmen jumping up to yell at Mark Messier. He responded. Set the lines for you with 4.16 to go. What's it, the crowd here tonight, would you say, Joe? Oh, I'd go eight and change on a guess, maybe nine. And what's the average? just at 8,800. Boy, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. What a Super. tribute to the organization and the city of Providence. With slippery road conditions outside yep. and all, and they have made their way here. They continue to do it in droves. The Bruins are in their second season of AHL existence. Northern Division regular season champs last year in fourth this year at the moment, but closing in on third. Four minutes to go, regulation time. Those who have filed in tonight have seen a good one. It's 5-5, late in the third. Sergei Joltak, right wing boards. Joltak, stopped by Mikulczyk. Right wing, the entry pass for John LeBlanc. Drops it to Vitalin, back for LeBlanc. Stopped by John Blue. Boy, this is an excellent play here by Vita Lynch and LeBlanc. LeBlanc knows it. He just gives a little tip of the cap to Vita Lynch. As Vita Lynch, they isolate the defender here, Smith. You see, they're just playing a two-on-one with Smith. Give it back to Vita Lynch. Isolate Smith in the middle of it. And left shot coming in off that right side. Blue's able to hold the corner. John LeBlanc, dangerous as always, even from a bad angle. He put a testing chance on John Blue. Yeah, and it really wasn't that bad an angle. There's a left shot right there. You know, he had, as you could see, he had a little bit of that far post to go for. Not a bad record for Blue at home. Right now, however, would he be the goalie of record? The Bruins, yeah, he surrendered the fifth. Is that correct? So it would be John Blue's game to win, lose, or tie. 12-2-2 two two at the Civic Center. 
The draw to Blue's left. Ross Wilson bear hugged by Darren Stolt. John Roloff will take a turn now. Roloff will lob it to center. Mikulczyk right in the bread basket for Moncton. Oleg Mikulczyk weaves away from Knipscher to center ice. Chopped back by Craig Fisher. Fisher lunging in. Stolt came to meet him. Here's Fisher with a seam in the defense. Couldn't get the shot away. Loose puck. Bruins scrambling. Providence gets it out of there with Sergei Burdnikov. At center, Ross Wilson on the takeaway. Wilson tried to send in Andy Brickley. That was swiped again. Back in comes Knipscher. Drop pass Burdnikov. Triggers the wrist shot off of Milan Tihi skate. Bruins again with a chance. Swung through the goal mouth by Knipscher. Weimer down low. Midpoint Hammond will keep it in. 2.50 to go in the third period. Ross Wilson dumps it back out for Moncton. Robbie Laird wants the shift chain. This one has a cent of overtime about now. The Bruins are very familiar with that. They lead the league with 10 tie games. Here's Andy Brickley. Right wing circle. Brickley to the goal mouth. Blue gobbles that up and will take no chances in this tight contest. He'll squeeze for the whistle. Brickley was looking to make a play. Held it about halfway between the blue line and the top of the circle. But the, winner, the Winnipeg team, the month the team was on a change. There were no late men coming. See, right now he's holding it, trying to make a play. Finally decides to flip it on net as there was no one in a blue shirt coming back into the zone. John Blue says don't try it to Rob Murray. Murray remains out there. He's very good on faceoffs, and one would assume that Coach Laird would have Murray out there late in the period. Flanked by Dan Bilesma and Ken Jernander up front. Murray will draw against John Morris. Morris beat him clean. Jim Weimer turns the net. Stick checked by Jernander. Weimer will try it again, reversing the flow. Hammond bottled up. Blue helping his own cause around the dasher, not out. Good work by Copeland to keep it in. 5-5 hockey game, 2.15 to go, regulation time. Bruins will storm to center. Morris leads the charge. Left wing, Cam Stewart loads and drives. Deflected wide by Copeland. Clock ticks down, two minutes to go in period three. Center ice territory, Hammond. Away from Murray, who applies the hook. Jernander with a steal, along with Bilesma. Bilesma, a weak little wrist shot. Blue stops and tries to catch the Hawks in the middle of the line chain. Stewart, dead tired, will dump it in himself. Beauregard slows it for McCoolchick. Around the dash, you're not out. Smith towards the goal, blocked away. Grigori Panaleev digging. Dennis Smith chops it. Here's Roloff with a drive wide. McCoolchick still tightly guarding Stewart. Left point, Dennis Smith. Couldn't get the shot unloaded. Grigori Pantaleev in the corner with Stewart and Morris. Morris to the front. Beauregard with a stick in the way. I think right, he got caught there to John Morris between plays. I don't think he meant to throw that at the net. I think he meant to try to drag curl a little bit and do something with it to set up a play. He lost control of it just right there at the dot. He's trying to make something happen. Hit Stewart back to the inside, draw the defense to him and Come back the other way, but lost it off the edge of the stick. One more pass would have been pretty. A pensive Mike O'Connell. Nail bite in time. I like his tie to Very like sharp. That. Yep. TV red. 122 to go. Power tie. In the third. Son of a commodities broker, why not? Beauregard ready in the draw to his right. LeBlanc will take it against Sergei Joltak, who beat him cleanly. Smith fires. That was a block before it reached the net. Roloff off to Major. Now Grigory Panaleev swiped from his stick by Milan Tihi. 70 seconds to go. In regulation time, tied up at five. Sergei Joltak, outlet, Panaleev. Panaleev will dump it in. LeBlanc sets it. And the Hawks will move ahead, knowing that there are 60 seconds left in regulation time. Dennis Smith bounces one towards Beauregard. Careful on the handoff. Lekulchik spots Vito Lynch at center. Now off to Russ Romanuk. Romanuk tried to send it to the goal where LeBlanc was hovering. Couldn't get a stick on the pass. 37 seconds to go in the third. 5-5 your score. Joltak, great move to elude LeBlanc and clear in. Major tying up with Mikulchik. Clock ticks down to 25 seconds to go. Panaleev stops on the dime. Grigori Panaleev along the goal line. Hammond tried to cheat in. Look out. Here's the two-on-one. Hammond made the gamble. Cutting in. Left wing circle. Drive LeBlanc. Hits the goal post. 
The Bruins dodge the largest bullet of the night. Six seconds. You see the clock. Hawks with it. Late chance. Brickley. Cross site. Bloomston. Will he get it away? He does. Blue kicked it out. The crowd at the Civic Center catches its collective breath. John LeBlanc, one of the best shooters in the league, he buzzed one by John Blue, but it hit the goal post. Providence five, Moncton five. We're heading for sudden death overtime. This, well, this is just a great shot by LeBlanc. He just fires his laser, watches off the pole, near pole side. Eat. Hammond, as you pointed out, uh, Joe got stuck inside trying to get that goal to end the game, but he gave up a 2 on one break. Unfortunately, for the post, it's still tied. It paid off dearly in the uh, second period. It almost cost them big time there in the third. 5-5, five, five, heading for OT. We'll bring it your way next on Nesson. Inside the Providence Civic Center, a weary Stefan Beauregard preparing for overtime. Moncton and Providence, they've both been there before. For the Providence Bruins, this is trip number 11, a record of 0, 0 and 10. You see Moncton's record, no team in the AHL has lost more in the extra frame. Well, the tying goal was scored at 8.02 of this period. Jean LeBlanc's 23rd, LeBlanc's 23rd, is 8th on power play. And just see this play on the outside. Darren Stoke almost gets it away. The Bruins get stretched a little bit to the outside of that shorthand box. And on the inside, LeBlanc puts it away. And right at the end, John LeBlanc again. And to quote Joe Beninati, he hits the goal post. <laughs> look, at, look at LeBlanc with the stick raised. I had it, but the iron took it away. Well, he didn't have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I want to have that guy on my team in overtime, though. He is a sharpshooter. Five minutes, sudden death. First goal wins it. Bruins lead the league in 10 tie games. They have a league high seven tie games in this building. Back, back to back overtime for Providence. They were in a 4 4 deadlock with Hamilton Friday, and we have an icing call to get things going. Yeah, Andy Brickley didn't think so. He put on a real hustle play to get to that puck first. And Sometimes, you know, they don't reward the guy that really hustles. I think that they they tend to call that on the defensive side. You know, they, they lots of times you think that the offensive guy gets there first and it just doesn't seem to go that way. And it's happened both sides tonight. A little quick on the whistle. No, I don't know what it is. Just 13 seconds into sudden death overtime. Bruins led 2-1 after one, 5-4 through two. The Hawks, you just saw LeBlanc's game tying goal. And his near miss, almost at the buzzer. No, if they're not going to reward that guy for a hustle play like that, whether it's either team, they might as well just do it automatic. The international variety yeah. or the college well, variety? Or. I mean, it should reward the hustle play. Overtime continues in Providence tonight on Nesson. Alongside Bob Norton, I'm Joe Beninati with you. As the Bruins clear in, Gregory Panelay of skates after. Beauregard chips it along the dasher board. You hear the communication between players. Providence gets it back. Stolt fanned on a point drive. Hawks have a three on three developing. Good work. Joltak got back to stop that. Off on the wing. Here's Pantaleev. Right wing side and cutting. Back behind the goal. Full regard. Bloomston took a heavy rap from Sergei Joltak. Rob Murray for the Moncton Hawks. One minute played in overtime. We'll clear it in. Robbie Laird wants the shift change. Michael Connell wants to get fresh troops on as well. 
Stolt, outlet, Mark Major, who has played sparingly tonight. Major kicks it back off for John Roloff, who has played an awful lot. Roloff out to center. Capuano couldn't move with it. Here's Craig Fisher dancing in. Fisher chopped down. Ross Wilson continues the rush. Stolk with a hook check. Wilson working out. Wilson fighting through Stolk's check. Wilson still with it to the goal mouth. And Stolk got help from Capuano. Roloff took Fisher heavily to the board. Fisher comes back with a puck to the front. Fisher was spilled, no penalty call. 3.20 to go. Yeah, Fisher can't understand how Roloff didn't get a trip there. Sudden death overtime in Providence. David Capuano clearing it in. Moncton with it. Makulchik out for Ross Wilson, who's in dire need of a line change. Wilson flips it back, and Hammond will hold. Hammond has goals in four of his last five games. He'd love one here. Weimer works in. Left wing side, Major. Major bumped away by Makulchik. Morris digging the puck off the meshing. Morris ridden away by Milan Tihi. Hammond at the right point will watch the Hawks race ahead. Wilson heads to the bench for the line change. Jim Weimer storming in. Weimer, two Hawk defenders collapsed on him. Moncton clears to center. Ken Hammond moving right to left. Hammond cutting in with some speed building. Hammond swings the cage on his backhand. Ken Hammond to the goal mount. Harche was there. John Morris digging as well. Harche hoping for a loose puck. Burdnikoff is parked in the slot. Harche wins the battle. Todd Harche to the point. Smith drive, deflected. And off the mark there. 2.10 to go in sudden death overtime. Bruins have it in the attack zone. Burdnikoff being held. Crowd wanting a penalty. Referee O'Halloran turns a deaf ear to them. Hawks clear. Blue racing ahead again, trying to catch Munkin on that chip chain. You see the clock, less than two minutes to go. Bruins with an opportunity. Burdnikov canceled by Bloomstick. Moncton unable to clear. Point position. Roloff unable to fend loose from John LeBlanc. Murray will drive it back. Quick and rapid line changes for both clubs here in overtime. 90 seconds to go in the extra frame. Hammond swings his net once. Ken Hammond looking for a play to create. This floats one to center. Bloomston rockets it back in. Blue unable to slow down. Along the corner, Jernander shouldered away by John Roloff. 1.15 to go in sudden death overtime. 5-5 five, five your score. Murray took an elbow from Joltak. Puck corral by John Roloff. Roloff steps to center. Roloff in. Pantaleev off sides. Uh, Penalty have stretched just about as far as he could stretch, but couldn't keep that left leg on the line. You heard me say at the top of the uh, sudden death overtime, I'd want John LeBlanc on my team in overtime. Mike O'Connell is happy to have Grigori Pantaleya on his club in need when one goal wins. Robbie Laird fixing the knot. <laughs> Gotta look show. Even in overtime. Sergei Zoltak, his line coming off. Morris leads out Capuano and Major. A win tonight for Providence would move them within one of third place. The River Rats of Albany have lost today, as has second place Portland. Morris on the draw with Fisher. Moncton controls. Last minute to go in this hockey game. Weimer off for Hammond. Left wing delivery Mark Major stalled by Milan Tihi. And D. Brickley, dangerous as always. Brickley cutting in, but his Hawk teammates were offsides in the rush. Forty-five point nine seconds remaining in the overtime. Five to five the score. Score tied up at 8.02 of the third period by Jean LeBlanc. His 23rd, eighth on power play from Arnold Bloomston and Russ, uh, Ross Wilson. Wilson out there. Lined up across from Todd Harche. John Morris on the faceoff with Craig Fisher. Hawks again control. McCoolchick drives it back. 40 seconds now for the Providence Bruins and the Moncton Hawks to get the game winner. 
David Capuano over skates, coming out of his own zone. Fisher made the swipe, and then turned it over himself. Ken Hammond lobs it back. McCoolchick will take the handoff from Beauregard. 22 seconds now. 5-5 five, five score. Ragged in the neutral zone. Brickley, one touch to Ross Wilson. Wilson stopped in his tracks by Ken Hammond. Roll off late in the overtime. Moncton and Providence, it appears, are heading for the 5-5 five, five tie. John Roloff pitches it back out. A league high, 11 ties now for the Providence Bruins. Back-to-back -back ties on home ice this weekend. Stefan Beauregard will receive congratulations from his teammates. John Blue, a bit disappointed on his way to the dressing room. These two teams finish in the 5-5 five, five tie. Bob and I will wrap it up for you when we return in a moment on Nesson. 